Fertility Society Tamil Nadu chapter. I consider it as a great privilege and happy to welcome one and all who have assembled today for the seminar. Today, we all know the ART Act has come into vogue in uh, 2022, uh, which has made a lot of uh, apprehension to the clinicians and the ART specialists. So we are having two panel discussion, especially to allay our apprehension and to uh, take forward all our ideas regarding the ART Act. So to start the session, first, I call upon Chairperson Dr. Rajapriya. Um, she doesn't need any introduction. She's a managing director of Srinivasa Priya Hospital, and she's a, a executive member of uh, Fertility uh, Preservation Society of India, OXI, ATN RCOG. She's a FOXI Endometriosis Committee member, secretary of the Parambur IMA Women's Wing. She's a secretary, Indian Fertility Society, Tamil Nadu chapter. Over to Dr. Rajapriya to take on the proceedings. Thank you so much, ma'am, for those kind words of introduction. It's actually a very proud moment that OXI and IFS Tamil Nadu chapter are doing this program together. And as you highlighted, the whole idea is the ART bill was there, passed in the Lok Sabha, subsequently in the Rajya Sabha. It got published in the Gazette on January 25th, 2022. So it is essential for us to gear up to the regulations, understand the regulations, suggest some recommendations by April 2nd, if possible, to the concerned emails. To throw more light on this, the first panel is about how it is going to affect our practice uh, for the ART clinicians. For this, we have two eminent moderators, Dr. P.M. Gopinath and Dr. Priya Kannan. Dr. P.M. Gopinath has been my mentor and uh, I was the founder joint secretary of Indian Fertility Society Tamil Nadu chapter. It was a privilege working with him and he has been the past president of OXI as well. And he's currently the president of Fertility Preservation Society of India and a member of the International Fertility Preservation Society. He's a very learned man, likes to keep updated, and he heads the Department of OBG and Reproductive Medicine at Sims Hospital, Badaparni. And he has gone to the extent of updating his qualification as an MBA in Health Services Management. And uh, he's an apt person to run the panel. And along with him, we have Dr. Priya Kannan, she represents the embryologist aspect. Dr. Priya Karnan is the director of Garbha Rakshambhika Fertility Center. She's the past president of ACE India. And when, whenever we need an embryologist uh, advice, uh, she's always available to give us a helping hand. And together they have worked on this panel to help clinicians, particularly the ART practicing clinicians, as what is the update and uh, refinements needed. We have always adhered to guidelines. This is one more guideline and regulation which was on the pipeline for a very long time. And ART practice being a growing practice by leaps and bounds in the last decade, it's time for us to understand regulations and keep them in place. Without further delay, I request Dr. P.M. Gopinath and Dr. Priya Kannan to take over the proceedings of panel one. Thank you, Raj Priya. And thank you, President Oxy and uh, for this invitation to allow us to be a part of this very important discussion. So when we talk about ART guidelines, which has been happening for so long, then it, the, it has happened to be a rules, and then finally it had turned out to be an act. We, we are really stumbled by going through the details. As I was just telling the preliminary um, uh, discussions after going through everything looks like I just have to step down from con running a clinic and probably join anyone of us as a member I am free, free to just job and call me so but the, at the same time when you decline and step down that means you have not been doing something right all this time now you are scared and coming down so that is the reason we have to rectify, we have to go by the law and then we have to see what is best for us, both patient and us. So to have this, I have a wonderful co-moderator, uh, Dr. Priya Kannan, and uh, she will be just starting the slides. And as we just start the questions, we'll be having the discussion on that. We have our panel members and uh, we have the... Uh, very experienced Dr. Kundavi Shankar. She has been an HOD in the Institute of Reproductive Medicine and Women's Health in Madras Medical Mission. She has been practicing over 20 years. 
and she has trained several fellowship students who have been independent consultants all over the South now. So she has been a treasurer of Oxy and Tapizar, chairperson of Anti-Sexual uh, Harassment Committee of Triple M, and member of Endocrine Society of Foxy. The next person is Dr. Jairani Kamaraj. So she is a senior infertility specialist and director of Akash Fertility Center and a hospital managing committee member of Oxy. She has had several medals and awards and the best doctor award by MGR University Chennai and Rajamani Janakraman University first prize in gynecology and obstetrics and uh, Vadamalian Endowment gold medalist in MBBS uh, obstetrics and gynec examination. And you, she has been a very nice person, and uh, she is always friendly, cheerful, and a good team player. And uh, above all, she is uh, uh, she is going to be a useful contributor to this moderation. The next member is uh, Dr. Kirtika Devi. I had an opportunity to uh, work with her for in couple of occasions both in NOVA and also in Sims Hospital. She is a very ethical leading IVF specialist with about 25 years of experience. Her professional membership of uh, medical societies include ESAR, IFS, and International Fertility Research Foundation, where she has been doing a wonderful work and uh, in the Indian Medical Association as a life member. And she is the president of the International Fertility Research Foundation and executive committee member of Tamil Nadu chapter. The next person is Dr. Ajay Mane. He is a member, National Inspector and Monitoring Committee of PCPND Act. So that means he is going to throw more light on the laws for us. And he is a medical legal consultant since 18 years for free, of course, all the time. That's really great, Ajay and uh, a chairperson official amox website chairperson sexual uh, medicine committee chairperson adolescent health education committee amox in 2012 and 14 2014 and 16 past president aurangabad obj society ex superintendent mgm hospital aurangabad trainer foxy adolescent health education and Health Advisor, Sports Authority of India. And uh, he is a Charter President and uh, Rotary Club of Aurangabad. So uh, really a distinguished person to be in the panel. Our next member is Dr. Priya Selvarad. And uh, she is an Associate Director of GG Hospital, probably one of the earliest IVF centers to be started in South India. And she is widely trained in clinical and ART procedures, credited with journals and articles and ch chapter publications. She is an executive committee member of ACE, FPSI, and an IFS Tamil Nadu. Her areas of interest is fertility preservation and related techniques, and oocyte cryopreservation, pre implantation genetic screening, diagnosis, and high risk obstetrics. So she is again going to be with us to help us solve some of the issues which we feel that we are lacking in clarifying it now. Um, Priya, can you just start the presentation and start the questions, Mark? Yes, sir. Sure, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So, um, we have put together uh, some questions. Uh, basically, they were from ideas from sir on mm -hmm. what could impact uh, our regular fertility practice, which we've been having now. So without much ado, I'll just straight go to the first thing, which has given us all a shocker in terms of registration. So what is the guideline on the establishment of ERT clinic as of now, right now? Um, ma'am, Kundave ma'am, would you like to take it, please? I think the guideline, what they say is that the clinics which is involved in one of the activities like, you know, any procedures like IUI and IVF should be regulated, registered and probably supervised by the state, uh, which has been authorized by the national board. 
So, um, and uh, what happens to the existing PCP and DD registration or anybody has got an ICMR registration is that even stand or we have to do another time map. See, there is one more register. state registration is also there. <laughs> <laughs> ICMR is just an enrollment number what you've got. So we don't have to, I mean, they've just sent a mail also recently saying that it is just an enrollment and that has been uh, um, null and void now. And PCP and DT, I think um, uh, probably uh, we have got, all of them have got the registrations done and we have been sending this every month, fifth of every month, whatever we do, you know, all the ultrasound pro procedures, plus uh, the ART procedures, what we do, how many new patients have come, how many completed, how many incomplete. I still wonder why, uh, in spite of all this PCP and DT registration, they're asking for another ART registrations. Dr. Kopitnath will tell us. No, the, the point is, as for the new act, they want to uh, go through the end. They are just completely clearing away all the previous registration. As you rightly mentioned it, we got a mail from ICMR saying that it is no more and whatever has been happened is completely withdrawn. And then the same way state is registered. In fact, we have also submitted the renewal and then renewal inspection has also been done. That again is completely gone. So it all it comes into the single window registration through appropriate authority. That's what the law mentions it. From the center, the appropriate state authority, we have to do the registration and it will be a single window registration. That the is a concept. Is, PCP and it is also a government registration only, and we've been sending it to the state, uh, whatever procedures we have been doing all these years, you know, and the same thing which uh, we have to send it to the national board again. No, it but is through the, no, see, it, you know, it is the state board. Madam, basically two things there. Uh, as Gopina sir said correctly, ICMR was not giving the registration. It was only the agency which was regulating the rules, basically, which was not there in existence. Uh, so it has gone now. Uh, we have to register new for the uh, uh, state and uh, national authority. But for PCP entity, whatever registration we are having, they are carried for. We need not have new registrations. So even in PCP entity, we are sending all the details what has been asked now. Yeah, that is true. That 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 should be continued, madam. Thank you, sir. Thank you for that uh, clarification again, sir. Just to go through what is given in that law, just for okay. the. Uh, in that act, um, the registration fee. Um, as Jairani, you know, madam, is saying something. Sorry, I, I'm sorry, ma'am. I I didn't miss, ma'am. To clarify with Ma Ajay, man, I said the same thing. What we are doing, we have to continue even after this uh, board comes. That is, we have to follow up whatever this we are doing for ICMR as well as the state uh, board has to continue, sir. ICMR is completely vanished now. ICMR is gone now. Gone. PCP and it is to be continued. We have to include all our ART also procedures. What we are doing so far has to be continued, sir. Dr. Ajay just wanted so whatever we are sending to PCP and DT, now we have to send it to the national board of the uh, the, the reason bill people also. That's yes. All, all ART procedures we need to inform to the ART uh, centers before 5th of every month. Can I clarify regarding that the form of filling uh, for an IVF procedure? That is, yeah. we don't have a rule saying that you have to fill a form F for an IVF procedure. But what the ministry feels is you need to fill the second part of the form F for every IVF procedure you do, even though it's not involved with pregnancy. That the ministry has said very clearly, in spite of there are being no rules in any, uh, they are not given, not given any rules. And the local authority also is insisting that we send form Fs for every IVF procedure we do. So I think we have to follow that even in spite of us not getting any notification from the government. Shandra, Shermila, can madam, I have a please. question? If it is IVF, it's fine. What about the IUIs? So many scans we do. Uh, the IUI is also there, not for your scan, madam, but when you're doing an IUI procedure with a gamut, you're supposed to fill. That's what the ministry official told me when I asked him. Because uh, medical legal team of Foxy is very clear that we need not fill any form F for an IVF procedure or an correct, IUI correct. procedure. But the minute we got a local authority telling us, give us the form Fs for your all your ART procedures. So I didn't know because we didn't uh, have in Foxy this type of uh, uh, guidelines telling us. So I asked the ministry, the ministry official said very clearly, fill up form Fs and submit to your local authority in the PCP Act also. 
I guess every authority interprets the law in their own way. Correct. Madam, Madam, we were I and Ajay are there in the inspection committee of the National Inspection Committee of PCP India. T. The interpretation by the states are totally different from what the centre wants us to do. The centre is very clear in its thoughts. It's very clear, but the state authorities all interpret differently in every state, and that's why we have these hazards <laughs> of having different interpretations in different centre also. There's no clarity from the state government at all on this. Yeah, because I think recently there was some inspection. section and uh, i did raise with dr madri patel as well she says karnataka said not to fill up the form oh, f yes. whereas the south they're expecting us so i think probably uh, the for, the uh, central has to give us a clear instructions what forms to be filled in Uh, the, madam the center team the team member from the center also comes with the inspection committee this ajay also knows and they will they will tell a different interpretation and we are in the team the state government will tell differently and we just keep quiet and listen and come that's what i have done ajay what did you do yeah, basically a form is to be filled for a pregnant woman only that's all that's all that's correct, what forty tells us but the local authorities are insisting on getting form as form as <laughs> with ibf procedures and uh, no. i kept on asking and the minister that is wrong you give that is wrong that is wrong oh, no, no. see only only for ivf we need to fill form here yeah, uh, form g that is for invasive procedure that's all that's all sir but uh, they are asking from the local team that's what i have seen no no okay. we need to we need to have a clarification in writing from them Okay, I guess now, sir. I think, sir, we we must have something from our society saying that uh, uh, yes. this is what we have to fill for each, rather than them uh, dictating us. I think we should, if they have want something else, then they should give it to us in writing, which should also be clarified. I think yeah. each district officer has say having their own interpretation. Something I think we should just stand up and say, no, this is what our thing has said. If you want more, you give us in writing. You can't just yeah, that's true. That's true. Give an oral instruction of all these things. Very so difficult guess, to follow, Priya, because they don't listen to us at the I, local level at all. They don't. I guess no, no. I think we should, uh, as a as a body, as a national body, say something. I think that would be a better option too. Yes, take. Priya, Correct. we agree. We agree because what happens is the senior people or the doctors don't question. Yes, It's the clerks, you know, the assistants who come. people yes. who don't have anything they do question you that's the problem there so ha ma'am uh, we just have to move on from this point we have to move on yes yes we have to move on from this point and then about the registration of an ivf clinic we have two which uh, registration of course is an art clinic and art bank are going to be different in form 3 and form 4 and your application fee is level 1 clinic is 1 lakh and level 2 is ooping 5 lakhs <laughs> and the application fee will not be refunded and no fee shall be required they have been kind enough to say that no fee shall be required to be paid on resubmission of an rejected form if done within 90 days of rejection and of course the government uh, institute does not have a fee you have to do the renewal every 5 years which also incurs the same amount of money and you can appeal if there is a rejection you you should appeal within 30 days of rejection and they must view and they must take a view of the appeal within 60 days of the receipt of that so and in case of failure of renewal of registration the clinic or the bank would be given time to complete the ongoing ivf procedures and continue the maintenance of the laboratory lab only until up to 90 days and of course the certificate of registration is non transferable in event of change of ownership you have to completely apply for a new registration and event of change of management or uh, ceasing of functions as well both copies have to be submitted back to the state authority and a new application has to be filled in now ma'am jairani ma'am would you like to tell us about what constitutes a level 1 and what constitutes a level 2 clinic in art level 1 clinic is actually an art clinic where a preliminary investigations is taking and all the investigations investigating the women are a couple to find out the cause for the infertility do basic investigations and you can do up to iui and beyond iui is not included in the level 1 whereas in level 2 you can do all the procedures of art and even you can do some research work in that that's what the differentiation between a clinic level 1 and level 2 Level one only up to IUI, and level two we can do an advanced ART procedures and research procedures. That's the differentiation. Thank you, ma'am. And the key to note down here is all level one clinics, the clinics which we are doing only IUIs, also have to be registered in um in the bill. Um, no clinic can do an IUI without registration now. 
that to the level two. I think Sorry. it does level two clinics. Yes, Priya. It also, it also mentioned that you might probably have to have, because you're a higher level center, you have to have the MTP um, at uh, accreditation, PCP and DT, clinical establishment act, biomedical waste management. Yes, that all part. comes in the application. It is asked whether you have it or you don't have it. That's what they are asking. But I'm sure every clinic has to have a CEA. And of course, PCP and DT is a mandatory one. But if you're not doing any MTPs or no, um, uh, you're not handling any of the obstetric side of the of miscarriages, you may not need an MTP um, uh, certificate, certification probably. MTP is optional there. MTP is optional, but PCP and DT and CEA it is mandatory. are obviously mandatory. Priya, you say the research can be taken there. Should we get a special permission to conduct the research? I guess so, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Um, Priya, would you like to take us through the mandatory personnel that we need to go for the ART clinic? Probably you can highlight on the level one clinic. Okay. Uh, well, uh... The first thing that you need is obviously that you've already said it's a gynecologist who is uh, well qualified and they have, um, because it's a level one clinic, which just does up to IUI procedures. Uh, she's a well qualified gynecologist and a counselor is the most important because you have to run them through all the processes. And then you have to have a basic IUI uh, lab setup, which I think, I don't know if it's going to come up in the later questions about what a lab setup should ideally be. And, um, the gynecology should also be equipped in uh, knowing the indications and, uh, of course, uh, uh, working up of a couple, which are in the level one where they require only procedures up to IUI. And uh, they have to obviously ha uh, have uh, certain equipments, which are usually in the andrology lab that are required, and personnel that would be qualified to work in that andrology lab. I think qualifications of who these personnel are might become a um, question later. On. Yes, the truth. Uh, my, my query when I looked at this is if they want an IUI setup, how come they are not asking for a yeah. at least a junior embryologist in yeah, there? Yeah, sorry, sorry to interrupt. I think we are dealing with level one in the next panel. So, okay, okay, we'll just move on then. Yeah, okay. So in a level two, uh sorry, Arti, I completely missed that point. I just took it as ART personnel, so I'm so sorry about that. Um uh uh, Kritika, would you like to talk about uh, the the basic requirements, the mandatory requirements for level two ART clinic? Kritika, are you there? Yeah. I'm no, there. Okay. Can I can I take it? Yes, sir. Please. Yeah, yeah. I'm in order. Okay. Yes, uh, I I don't understand about the director they have given. Uh, they have given one sentence. Director must be a senior one. Why should not be a yes, junior? Sir. There are no specifications about the number of years that the director post person should have. Sir, they, I also had another query. Thing. Can one of the gynecologists be a director or it has yes. to be a separate post? May separate. I just can separate. 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 Question for debate because one side you have the clinical uh, art clinician who is a part of the level two and the other side you actually have to have a lab director who is running the IVF part of the lab. And you need specific qualifications for that, which is again a matter of debate among our ACE groups and everything. So uh, when they mean a director, like any of us who are running hospitals, we obviously call ourselves a director of the whole show. So you do have to have somebody who's senior most position, who has established the whole institution and who is, who is having certain numbers of years of experience. And uh, the person could be a gynecologist because obviously a gynecologist practice is the one that's going to carry on a fertility practice. So it should probably, I think what they mean is director of the lab is what I'm trying to understand. And then on the art clini clinical part, you have a senior gynecologist who's running the show. Yeah. So, but, so uh, this, but in this my format view, has been taken over from the ICMR guidelines. So in ICMR guidelines, there is a uh, director and then there is a uh, there's a gynecologist, lead gynecologist there for an ART clinic. They have been asking, so the, one cannot hold both the post. Okay. So that is how they have just clarified it. Probably they have copied up the ICMR guidelines. So, so basically, in, it is disparity. Director, one one can director be, can be a gynecologist. Sir. Can it be a medical director like we have in usual uh, 
you know no no he no, has no. to be trained in ert yeah they have to oh. know the how the <laughs> and they want to separate for gynecologist to run one ert clinic sir basic minimum yes 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 uh, there is a comment from dr vivek who is also a lawyer he has made a comment that the director ultimately takes res responsibility is for any medical legal cases which are put up on the offenses side So maybe that's See, basically, key, basically, key, director, key. director, what do they mean by director? Is the administrative in charge of that ERT, and he is responsible for that. And owner can be different. Huh? That is another issue. That is not given in ERT law. Owner can be different. He can be non-medical. Oh, obviously, sir, sir. I was just taking this. I always take this example when I talk about people. For example, Preeta Reddy. She is not a doctor. She owns the Apollo thing. so we can't say that they can't own a center they have probably 10 ivf centers and yeah, obviously so uh, so so i mean it always takes up sir somebody is an investor somebody is running the clinic but i guess the the owners of the uh, of the of that particular center will come under the director or because it is clearly mentioned no. that the, no, the owner no no the owner, owner, owner is owner is different and director owner is different no, so the owners yes, of the owners owner such okay okay yeah we will take it will be on the director all the uh, unless otherwise prove that the junior did some they can prove it every other um, legality is on the director that's what it says madam basically uh, whatever is done by juniors there is a vicarious liability which lies on the director yes sir yes sir so no, only uh, criminal uh, only only criminal liability does not uh, go to mm -hmm. owner all civil liabilities go to the okay So, would Dr. you like Ajay. to elaborate also on the on the on the yes, yes. qualification of the gynecologist? Kritika, ma'am. Kritika, would you yes. like to take it? So here they have given. Yeah, can I? Can I, Priya? Yes, yes, please, Kritika. Yeah. So here, what is specified for the gynec in level two ART clinic is they should be a medical postgraduate in OBG. That they are very clear, and for the years of experience, they should have at least three years of training in reproductive medicine, or clinically they should have performed more than or equal to fifty pickups. If they have already done fifty pickups, then yes, you can run the center, and or they could have done their fellowship or a reproductive medicine gm so if they have a super specialist degree then there is no question they don't have a degree then they should have at least 3 years of working experience so that is what they have specified mainly for the qualification of gynec in a level 2 art clinic and so they want two guy next like in addition to that they have said that we should have either a senior, senior and a junior embryologist and a andrologist and an anesthetist who should be part of the yes a director a gynec should be there in a level 2 art clinic that is the main specification yes and they want two guy next like that with at least a post grad super specialty or 3 years of experience in art two guy next so yes. uh, that's a bare minimum that you need to have and of course as uh, dr kritika has mentioned we need an andrologist who must be a urologist or a surgeon with the training in andrology or so or um, and that is mch or dnb sir uh, my question now sir we have a lot of doctors who have done post graduate diploma in andrology so would they be available to us as andrologist or how does it work sir no they have given that is either mch or dnb or a mh general surgeon and experience in urology diploma won't work here basically and one more thing they have not given that they should be full time with you they can be a attached uh, uh, surgeon also sir in regard to the gynecologist uh, as well can they be like they, they must know, be full time they must be full time oh both the gynecologists have to be full time sir obviously uh, no sir i'm just asking because there are people who have two clinics also no sir then that, that yeah they means... can they can they can have two clinics no I okay. thought it, it had a clause, Priya, where it said you could, provided you pro, you uh, you know keep your efficiency levels. Ah, uh, uh, exactly, exactly. <laughs> I saw that clause as well. So, and I just can consult in two cases. Priya, can 
but keep up the efficiency of your work throughout without letting go of something like that they should be no. able to take the complete no, no, responsibility uh, that's what it Priya, actually Priya, that is meant for embryologists not for the gynecologist no no no, no and that's for everyone it is mentioned ma'am andrologist okay. also this this and also and is mentioned second thing second thing for uh, law purposes we need to uh, display the timing of the consultants yeah yes. okay okay Dr. Ajay, I have a question. Uh, suppose a gynecologist is coming and using our center for the uh, ART procedures. How does it go with them? Should we? Should they? Get Madam, we we should have one. Uh, we should have one uh, tie up uh, like uh, legal document between the ART center and the doctors. Like an MOU. Because, MOU. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So they don't have to go register separately. Is that? No. 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 The center is registered, Madam. Doctor is not registered. Ah, okay. So they can. It, it would be like a referral of a case, and that's about it, no, sir. Yeah. yeah. And the center takes over the the. Now, now the real combined practice will start. Mm. Ilipriya, what I'm asking, suppose uh, you know somebody is using my center for the IVF procedures. That is, what happens doing to the gynecologist? What happens to the gynecologist? Should she register the uh, to the state board or something that she's working with our center? Like ultrasound, yeah, yeah. we give a list of doctors' name. No, whoever is using the ultrasound. So, madam, that gynecologist is uh, doing the pickup at your center. Ah, if if she is doing she herself, know. then the, her name is to be included in your clinic. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's what I'm asking, sir. So that yeah, means yeah. I have to send the doctor's name when I'm sending yeah. to the state board, right? Correct, correct, yes. correct. Like what we do it for the PCP and so like the PCP. Yes, yes. like the PCP and yeah. Yes. Ah, okay. All the names should be there in that uh, registration certificate you get. Yeah. And displayed also. Displayed also. Yeah, they, they have given that uh, if the number of doctors are more, you can attach separate paper like this. Means any, any n number of doctors can be there. But madam, include all of them because at the end of it, if one is coming and doing for one case in a year, also you have to include. Yeah, ah, yes. Okay. okay. All the staffs in the center have to be integrated to the uh, uh, center. Yes, national. yes. We are coming to that. We are coming to that. So, in terms of senior, uh, in terms of embryologist Priya, would you like to tell? Because we've been having so much of discussion or ACE groups regarding this. I know we had a very nice uh, panel on this, and uh, uh, I mean they have already specified. But remember, you guys put out a whole um, uh, online uh, thing, okay. and, and you found that there are not many, very many PhD holders, right? And there are, it's a very niche. Uh, uh, niche uh, degree and uh, and your years of experience even from people who have had more number of experience in uh, embryology compared to a PhD holder recently then become sidelined right so what yes. happens to all of them so here this is what they require they want for a senior embryologist a PhD holder who's on site uh, either in uh, clinical embryology or any postgraduate from a re registered university recognized university and with an additional one year experience, or they should have MBBS qualification or any, any of the life sciences. We went through all of this. Well, the specialties that I've mentioned is all fine. You have a clinical embryology, biotechnology, veterinary science, reproductive biology, because in all of these, they either do on animal, um, this thing, or on the humans. And with minimal one year clinical embryology certified training or two years experience. Imagine by the time they qualify and then they get those two years of experience and then, then they are recognized as a senior embryologist. Uh, so Priya, I'm asking you, so does this work for us? Uh, you know, this uh, PhD, how many years of experience actually make you a senior embryologist? What happens to those whom we already have, uh, you know, inducted in our lab who have at least 20 years of experience? What happens to them now going That's forward? As you know, Priya, and everybody would agree with me, uh, three years of PhD in clinical embryology, I would find it personally, I would find it inadequate to put them as a senior embryologist exactly. because uh, they wouldn't have the experience nor the hands-on to go ahead and work on patients straight away or just with one year. Uh, whereas people who have probably had, they probably would have a lot of theoretical knowledge, but then to put it, put them put my patients, give them the eggs and embryos and say, please go ahead and do it. A senior embryologist is expected to do a biopsy as well. So if they can't do it, then I'm not sure if this is 
adequate but i think at least a basic degree they are having which at least is fine but i guess we will have to work on each lab will have its own uh, specification on how many years of experience you would want to have as your senior and junior embryologist and coming to junior embryologist and a senior and a junior embryologist both are mandatory for an ivf lab so priya would uh, uh, anybody jairani ma'am would you like to take on on a junior embryologist a uh, junior embryologist according to the law they should be a, a graduate in a life science it could be a veterinary or a reproductive biology who had a three minimum three years of experience in that field they should have a three years experience either it could be in a veterinary practice or in a reproductive biology or they can be a post graduate in biotechnology or a reproductive biology and veterinary science these are the two categories they have given in the law so ajay sir i have a doubt may sir may i ask another question So yes. by the time these graduates, you see, all of us. I mean, our mothers establish our centers, and then we have been training girls for years. See, when they come in, what do they then? What do they become when they enter? They are coming fresh from graduation, right? And then you take them and you are training them. What is in that interim period when they acquire that three years to become a junior embryologist? What are they called? Are they the technicians? You can call them trainee or assistant trainee, embryologist, trainee embryologist, whatever. Uh, trainee embryologist. Uh, trainee embryologist. Trainee embryologist. Sub junior. Sub junior embryologist. <laughs> <laughs> what is the technician coming there for there was something called the technician oh that is not mentioned here that is in a different uh, that is in a different yeah. forum that can be assistant what, yeah. that can be assistant assistant As embryologist or a trainee embryologist yeah. sir ajay sir i had this doubt sir uh, there are lot of embryologists who are uh, uh, graduates of bds graduates of uh, ayush sciences as well Uh, medical, I mean, uh, uh, I mean, uh, Ayurveda and Siddha. Would they be able to come under this, uh, under the under the umbrella of life sciences, graduate in life sciences, uh, or they because, will not be allowed to practice anymore? Yes, ma'am. It is not yet clear. Basically, in PCPND also, they have given permission to Ayurvedic BMS, uh, BMS and MD. in the radiology in the ayurvedic field the given the permission of pcp entity likewise they may give under the heading of life life science as you said okay so it is not and yet please, clear is not yet clear not and clear this government will decide to the elaborately favor ayush people so no need to ajay sir and this government will definitely encourage ayush graduates <laughs> they will give permission <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, so is it approved for a uh, ayush and this people to practice for pcp entity will they come under yeah madam yes yeah, they have given i have got the letter so i send you how we can send the registration everything for them for the application when that is a different story that is different story but they have approved central government <laughs> ajay sir there's a question from the audience what they're asking is like fellowship programs right uh, one week also sometimes people get a fellowship program so how does that fellowship program go Fellowship program must be of uh, not less than one year. Then and then it is it. Minimum of one year. I think. But the qualification must be MBBS. But for example, yeah. one week is not a fellowship. One week is how you are conducting. One week. One week is certificate course, madam. Certificate it's course. It's a training program, sir. Not even a certificate course. Certificate course. Ah, yeah. That's true. Six months or so. The This is a training correct. program. What about a training one week training program? One week, two weeks, two weeks. No, no. Uh, but not at all not, not at all approved the, for example then you and one more thing they are all are online they are not recognized it should be yeah. on site on then and then only it is recognized it's clear, it's clear here it's clear and here it's written that it's on site and yeah. even in the gynecology is mentioned that it must be a um dnb or a um mch only a dnb is a two year program <laughs> and mch is a three year program nothing less than that and a fellowship in reproductive medicine anything that is not recognized by the mci will not be recognized by the law all the fellowship that is not recognized by mci will not be recognized here obviously correct correct we have to go only by the mci recognized degrees in all these uh, on these law matters so coming to the important the mandatory uh, facilities that we need to have in the art level clinic 2 uh kundale ma'am would you like to throw some yeah, light on it whatever you have written uh, uh priya you need to have a laminar flow bench with uh, thermostatically controlled heating plate stereotype microscope 
and a high resolution inverted microscope probably with the video recording i just want to ask you is it a must to have a video recording that's what they have given ma'am with the video recording so we must and, have a video recording yeah micro monitor co2 incubator hot air oven uh, a centrifuge for freezing embryos liquid nitrogen a refrigerator and ahu unit madam that video recorder camera cost 40 lakhs rupees sorry sir video recorder camera of that uh, embryo no uh, You you are talking about the video camera in no, the incubator, sir. no? No, no, sir. It is no, in the no, uh, microscope. This is the inverted microscope where we do the experiment. Okay, okay. okay. This is not so expensive, sir. This sorry, is... sorry, sorry. No, I thought that in the incubator camera. No, no that's sir, a no, time no, lapse. No, no, no. What you are talking about, time lapse. Ah, that is very uh, costly. So that's not forty lakhs, sir. That's seventy to eighty five yeah. lakhs, sir. <laughs> so the the addition here that has been made mandatory or two to note that is to have a video recording in the inverted microscope and a ahu and ahu has been made mandatory now so it is high time that we all start having a, we, it's which been made mandatory with the i don't know the, the only thing that they have not mentioned is the number of air exchanges that they require here but ahu has been made mandatory here um Sir, Gopinath, uh, uh, sir, would you like to take on the monitoring? Yeah, hey, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, okay. ma. I am here. Okay, thank you, sir. Um, sir, uh, and Jairani, ma, would you like to talk about how the patient enrollment monitoring has to happen in this? Okay, so I'm just. Uh, Kundave, ma'am. Anybody, anybody wants to mention about a few lines on how the monitoring and maintenance of record has to happen here? So I can uh, answer. Uh, yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Please go ahead, ma'am. That is just a record. So as it is, you have to maintain all the records of the patients right from the day they enter the hospital for the first registration, and they have to keep the couple's name, address, and proof of their address. That's very important, and the address also is very important. And what are all the procedures they have gone through? in your center has to be documented properly with all the details and whatever the test they have done has to be registered and everything if possible it should be maintained in a software that's what they are making it's a very mandatory one that we should record everything uh, right from the patient's registry up to all the test laboratory investigations everything has to be put on a proper uh, you have to maintain all the records and all the procedures with everything on a perfection that's very important then if a patient's detail has to be taken every details of the test the investigation they've gone through and the uh, i mean uh, whatever the procedures they've gone through has to be uh, submitted or it should come in a pool that it, there should not be any lack in all these things that is what they are very 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 specific no i think all the investigations part we have to preserve it as a record yeah. and whatever is it, the new patient and old patient and uh, whatever suppose you have completed an iui you just see you have completed or in the process or in art like how many pregnancies how many miscarriage everything has to be documented like what we do it for pndt yes and it says that all the uh, case related forms consent everything has to be preserved for at least 10 years from the date of completion of the art procedures correct exactly correct. yes can we add uh, two more questions from the audience for that they are yes, asking please. See, we, we always take aadhar proof no aadhar or passport uh -huh. or Some uh, the same um, uh, photo address and all those things, but they are asking do you need photograph of the couple and marriage certificate? Yeah, photograph and marriage certificate is made. Uh, yeah, Kundu ma'am. Ah, mandatory. We were taking it for the donors actually when they come for a marriage certificate and the things, but for the things. we do only the photographs during the semen analysis See, because the law does not ask you to just ask for a marriage certificate you can even for a living partner today you can just do a ivf so yes, in that sir. case where will they go in for a marriage certificate yes <laughs> so what do you want to make a mention uh, comment on that no it is for the donor and it surrogacy the donor. there it is mandatory but whereas when the patient walks in and just say that they want to have it uh, it you cannot ask them for the marriage certificate okay. they sign the declaration saying that husband and wife with the witness in front of everybody that should be more than sufficient for their identity you are having an aadhar card there aadhar card and photograph i can keep photograph of the couple we take it's good to have their pictures probably it's good to have a photograph 
thing we, for our we, record we keeping. We have it during the semen analysis. We fix a photograph because exactly it's safe for us also. Medical legally, we are very safe. Yes. yes. You keeping track of time, Priya? Yes, we'll be uh -huh. finishing in another five to seven minutes. Is that okay? No, 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 no. You can take more than that. You have oh. twenty minutes. Oh, lovely! Thank you so much. So uh, these are all the consent forms that we need to maintain. Uh, that is what uh, uh, the number of consent forms we need to maintain and uh, beautifully labeled between 12 and 21. And we have to maintain for 10 years of that. And uh, cryo storage. Uh, Priya, can we all uh, scan these consent forms and keep it? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Yeah, basically no, you I'm can scan and scan keep it, but the uh, printed, copy, printed copy is mandatory. But yeah, you yeah. can so, have a soft copy. Maintain the printed copy. So I agree with your printed copy in the files, but uh, for it 10 years to keep the records, can you it is very difficult. these files? It is very difficult, madam. But we and and have to do moreover, it. we need to produce everything before 5th of every month to the appropriate authority. Okay. Okay, should that be in Tamil language for our state or it can be in English alone? Pardon? Should it be in the local language of the state or it can be in English everywhere? English. No, because the form they have given in English, ma'am. English, 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 but English. always a local language uh, concern must be there. No, the, yeah, yeah our, the particular language concern is mandatory. For all the forms no, if it is, sir, sir, if it is not available in, madam, uh, if it is not available in uh, local language, mm -hmm. you can write one sentence below that uh, English that it has been explained. Okay. It has been explained in local language and have a signature. Oh, sir, during that's an a NIBH point. audit, during an NIBH audit, they ask for the uh, bilingual as well, both in English and Tamil or the local language. Okay. Yeah. So, so can we add that line? This has been explained to duly explained to me. In the yes, yes. Understood by yes, ma'am. One concern. Yes, yes. In Tamil, Tamil, yeah. You have to write that in Tamil <laughs> and language. <laughs> <sign. laughs> yeah. Good, good. Challenging. <laughs> <laughs> so okay. moving on to the cryo storage, um, the one good thing that this uh, this ART rules has addressed is the duration of cryo storage, in particular to the onco fertility patients. So we can go through one by one in terms of duration of storage for infertility patients and onco fertility and the fate of embryos and how about the excess embryos and shifting of embryos of one thing to another. Um, anybody can take and take it one by one. Infertility patients probably around 10 years and non fertility more than 10 years, but you'll have to inform the state board. No, national board, madam. National, national national sorry, board. national board. National board. Yes. And, uh, you cannot donate any of these. Uh, fate of embryo for a prescribed period, the couple would have already signed, whether it is to perish or for uh, research or to be donated to the spouse. And excess embryos cannot be donated to another patient. It's only going to go to the bin. Okay. And um, this was my confusion. Shifting of embryos and gametes from one place to another, earlier it was not possible, but now in this particular uh, uh, print, it is, you, you can do it. Itself. If you have informed the national board, is that right? You can shift yes, from one place yeah, to another. You can see. No, no, see. Uh, uh, yes, I, I just want to explain that, madam, if you want to uh, uh, transport the gamete for yourself only, Within India, with the yes. permission of Central Board, you can. For yourself, so for example, if a patient for yourself to... only, for sir, yourself have... only. Sir, we have a query. So suppose we are requesting for a donor sample from from a from a bank, salmon sample. So we have to in advance uh, inform the National Board, and then only they can shift the sample. So yes. which means that on that day, if I don't find sperms suddenly for that patient, and they had not had a backup sample freezing. Uh, that means I will not be able to get an emergency donor sample procured from the bank on that day. It, I have to freeze the eggs and then No, go. probably this, this provision is for the embryos only. Okay. The form no, embryos. No, but it and then it yeah. says that shifting of embryos and gametes as well. Excuse me, Priya. This is from the bank. You can get another sample immediately. There is no need for any permission from national authority for it. Only when you okay. shift from one ARP center... To another center, you're going okay. to need a permission. Okay, okay. So if you're going to get a cement sample from an ART bank, it's not required at all. Okay, that's great. That's I think within the country is allowed. 
within the country, yes, sorry, within the country it is allowed. Within the country is allowed. Shifting of embryos is allowed. Yes, so correct. Patient, if a patient is going from Chennai to Mumbai and she wants to continue treatment there, I can shift her gametes which are frozen in my center to yeah. Mumbai. Yes, yes, correct. You just correct. have to get the approval from the national board for that. National board. Then and then only afterwards you can go. Yes. And out of yeah. India is no question. It is not allowed. Or an information, sir. No, no, with, with information also it is not allowed. Out of country is so if somebody not allowed. is shifting Absolute from not. here to USA, that means no. they, can't, uh, they can't take the embryos with them. No. No, no, no. 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 They, can, they can so take it inside the body then. So these people <laughs> say that. <laughs> See, <laughs> even in the previous <laughs> no, even in the previous law, yes. we cannot uh, export the gametes. So yeah, yeah, still there. The same thing holds yeah. good. The same yeah. thing they continued. They continued. Dr. Ajay, uh, they say that we have to inform the national board, you know, the think centers. Yes. But yes, how early do these people reply to us? For ICMR, they never reply to us for a long time. Exactly. Oh, here, here, here we have got responsible bodies who will answer our questions. Madam, ICM ICMR was not, a, was not even a legal body to give any direction on uh, IRT, ma'am. They no, just we did some regulation. Before. Priya, earlier we had to write over there and uh, then once they replied, after that they just yeah. completely cut off. Yes, they yes, true. Never... And in terms of onco-fertility, in terms of onco-fertility, this rules has allowed cryopreservation of oocyte sperms for onco-fertility patients undergoing treatment or any for any such conditions for duration even longer than 10 years with permission from the National Board. So, um, it is a good thing that they have addressed this. Gopinath, sir, would you like to say something yes, on it? It's a very, very useful thing because it is not time-bound procedure. See, once when they undergo this uh, fertility preservation, until they are completely cleared by the uh, treating oncologist, they will not come back. So, that is, it's not a time-bound procedure. It is a very, very useful for fertility preservation for uh, oncological patients. Sir, no, sir, and we are very happy it has been addressed at least this time. It was never yes. addressed in any of the previous versions ever. Yes. So, uh, and uh, Gopina, sir, are... I want to ask one question. Yes, yes ma'am. This one. Uh, so, the don donating their unused embryos, if there is a concern from the patient, can we use it? As no, ma'am. It is only no, for research. Not. Okay. It is only for research. So we can't get a column of that way hereafter. Right? No, no, no. And even uh, for the embryos research. of one patient cannot be given to another patient. It can only be thrown or given for research. And also, ma'am, for creating donor embryos, we have to uh, register the patient, create specifically for them, and then only do we cannot already what we have stored cannot be transferred. It seems. We have, and, we have time to address two issues. One, yeah, we have. And I just wanted to mention that another new thing they have uh, mentioned is that the, all the cryo can should be fitted with local alarms and linked to an auto dial or a similar facility and to alert a staff on non conformities. That's another new thing they have added in this particular version. Um, of course, yes, Priya, please go ahead. Yeah, just, just I. I, I, I okay. One is the art, uh, art bank. Uh, you know, how does an, uh, can an art clinic run an art bank? That is one I want to clear in this forum. And second is anything on stem cell, if you... if you Yeah, we will come to that later. We will finish this and then uh, the most important oocyte donations and surrogacy and we will take those questions as well. Since Ajay is there, he might be able to uh, speak about Madam, that. just there is, there is one correction from Dr. Kichandra Sharma. He has called me. Yes, sir. Uh, he, yeah, he, he said in ART law, which was there, now we are uh, talking about the rules and regulation. In ERT, they have given the permission uh, for self-use uh, at international level. One more Self-use. Self-use. Okay, so we can take the gametes from India outside the country. Yeah, that was, that was my mistake basically. I, I, uh, I okay. uh, overlooked but it. But can we import the, we can, they can also bring no. the embryos along with no, them? No, 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 no. It says no actually. Import or export? Yeah, it, it is the said that it is prohibited, but for self, with the permission of okay. uh, national board, we can do. Okay. okay. So there is a lot of the most important thing everybody has been like wondering is about, uh, and it's been ambiguous is about the donor oocytes. So 
the oocyte donation. And um, so let's start with how to procure a donor. That's the first thing. So, um, ma'am, Jairani ma'am, would you like to take it? How, how, from where can we get our donor? So we have to get the donor from a registered ARP banks here after. The ARP bank will screen a donor, check everything, maintain a records of the donor, and we have to get the donors only from the registered ARP banks here after. And uh, who can be a donor that we know? I mean, if you can just mention, ma'am, that would be good. It is very important. No, no near relative is allowed, allowed. basically. Yes. No known donation is allowed um, in sperms or in uh, oocytes. And uh, in terms of screening of the oocyte donor, um, of course, the banks will have to maintain all these papers in regard to the donors, and they also have to maintain for a long period of time. And, sir, I, I think we all have this question about compensation for the donor. Ajay, sir, please. Let's talk about this, spend a minute on this and talk. They are asking us to give us an insurance coverage. So how would it be of any use to the patient? Because we know that any insurance coverage, unless you pay for uh, at least two years, they're not going to give you back anything. So how is it going to be of use to the oocyte donor? It is for 36 months, I think. Adam, it is, it is for three years. Basically, they have given it okay. for 36 months. No, no, this is for 12 no, months. Donor is for 12 months. No, 12 months is for oocyte donor and 36 months is for surrogate mother. Sir, so so even is, for 12 months is one year of insurance paid, sir. One year of insurance paid, how would it, how would it even benefit the donor? Yeah, basically and, few of the conditions they are not covered on first year, basically. Yes, so we sir. need to... Uh, huh. We need anyway, to have a conversation with the IRDA. Pardon? The donor will not get any compensation. It is when she'll be only by covered by the insurance. That's number one. But the responsibility one, lies with the commissioned couple. We are giving the identity of the donor to the commissioning couple. Again, you know, it's going against the law. <laughs> so yeah, there are flaws. I have a doubt. Is it that because you're procuring this through the art bank, the art bank takes care of the uh, compensation and mediates that between the intending couple and the donor? Or because we clinics will not be involved in that, right? We are only going to do the scientific part of the work. Yes, correct. ERT, so, ERT uh, bank will do that. They have an amount, you know, which they are going to compensate the donor with because surrogacy is altruistic, but this oocyte donation is not. So they are, and both uh, surrogate and oocyte donors are covered by com uh, insurance. What about any other any other monetary compensation in oocyte? No, no, no monetary compensation is allowed, madam, in, in both of cases. Okay. Then which so then who will donate the eggs? No. Separate relationship with the donor. Dr. I mean, Ajay, I the the insurance is meant for the the health of the donor because we are Yeah, health of the donor. Problem. Anything goes wrong, the so uh, over over. The, so which donor will come and give the eggs without any compensation? Mm. It becomes altruistic again, no. I thought it was not altruistic for us. No, no, Basically, it is madam, they, now. No, they, what they consider, the word is donation. It is not a sale. It is a donation. That's why it is free. Okay. But Likewise, like they must have it, thought. It's priceless, <laughs> sir. Like surrogacy, we Obviously, it is priceless, the but the government people who can uh, know, explain them. But why no. Can the intending couple have a relationship with the outside donor and what happens mm. behind the screen is not known to us. Is that okay? I'm asking Pardon? a very open See, if, if we are procuring the USA donor from the art bank and then huh. she has a health insurance given to her, will the intending couple are going to know the identity of the donor? No. Oh, they are not going to know the identity of the donor? No. See, no. How, then no. how is that the intending co commissioning couple will help them for the insurance, sir? Through bank, madam. Through uh, ART bank, they will do that. So it will be blindsided. They only pay for it, but the bank How will can I sign a paper people. without... Uh, why would I sign up insurance paper without knowing anything about the donor, sir? No, basically, no, no, you are not be signing. Like that. Kundavi, you are not signing. Ah, the you will be the signing. The you are paying the money. Ma, you are paying the money. Yes, that's, that's what I said. You are paying only the money. You are not signing it any would, paper. It would be like that. You are submitting the money to the ERT bank and the bank will be having the insurance. Will it be a fixed amount or it will be a variable one, sir? <laughs> that is not clear yet. The total amount to be insured has not been clarified so far. 
but the only the duration they just mentioned it as 12 weeks for a outside donor and three years for the surrogacy but exact amount coverage is they have not yet clarified it okay yes that's uh that's a very ambiguous point that they've given but we do, don't even know how we are going to get uh, donors without any compensation um, now, Kritika, would you like to take this very important point? And I think Ajay, sir, would be also, if you can make these points very clear to us, we'll be very happy on the number of eggs that we can take from a donor. <laughs> yes. So this is a burning question among all of us because the magic number of seven is practically not possible. Each one of us know that. I think luckily in this March, uh, vote, 7 to 15 mosaics is permissible. Only thing is they don't want the donor to land up with OHSS. So yeah, yeah. I, I, yes. All the follicles. Yes, sir. Kritika, madam, as you said, previously they have given seven, then in the, during this period they have made it seven March to fifteen. And now in rules and regulations, they have given again seven at one time. And you have to aspirate all the devil pools. The Likewise, the second sentence is given. So suppose then if I aspirate all the follicles, I have to use only seven eggs and then throw the rest of the eggs. Three eggs. Actually, there was a clause, madam. Three eggs for that particular patient itself. There was a clause in the earlier act where the remaining oocytes can be preserved for future use for that particular... Country. For same patient. For, for same, same patient, patient, not for another patient. For the same patient. Yeah. Because and next time, if you, if you, next time, if you do not get the oocytes, then we can use the previous one. Likewise, they have... So why should I freeze as a oocyte? Why not as an embryo, Priya? <laughs> uh, I don't know, ma'am. That's what the law says, ma'am. <laughs> there are so many, so many things unanswered. No, no so I would always prefer to freeze as an embryo, ma'am. But then the law says freeze as an egg. So I'll freeze as an egg, ma'am. That's all, ma'am. Pri, I think I've told Aarti to take down all the points so that, you know, you can make it and send it to the as a mail to the government. Sure, ma'am. Sure, ma'am. Correct. Correct. And there is this ambiguous uh, line also. I saw that the gynecologist may transfer preferably one, not more than two embryos. In cases with explainable circumstances, three embryos can so be that so yeah, they, they have allowed up to three. Up, up to three. three, a maximum of up to three, but then preferably but one. So we are all going towards a blast transfer, probably. <laughs> no, you say, you you people say na, ki one uh, transfer is having good results. That's why they must have given chance to you. And uh, we had this uh, very good discussion, Priya, on the cement culture carried out to be carried out on all samples, and of course, all the all these the 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 viral testing has to be done on all the donors just 15 days prior to the oocyte aspiration. So, um, so that closed, even if you have screened before, they want the viral testing done 15 days prior to the donation of the oocytes. That's another thing. The, the day they come there on the second day, probably you can do. Yes, sir. So that's a that's the most you can do. It's very difficult for them to trace it before they get the periods to get it done and then asking them to come after the periods. True, sir. True, sir. So, uh, yeah, and then cement culture has been made mandatory for us. For yeah, our... cement culture is mandatory. Yes. Um, so, so we know it is yeah. not uh, uh, recommended, but evidence-based, but we yes. still do it. The last 20 years, we've been doing cement cultures. So we don't do cement cultures. Yeah, we don't do cement Unless you do a prosthetic massage and then do it, it's not going to be useful. Ah, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Agreed. Correct. Yeah, we we'll have it. to wind up in another five minutes. We have, so we have come to the last. So we have come to the last. So surrogacy. So who can be a surrogate? We know. And then the compensation legal document will go one by one. Um, so there has been clear guidelines uh, mentioned on who uh, the indications for surrogacy. Uh, Jairani, ma'am, would you like to mention a few? Point where all of us can voice together. Yeah. Sorry. We can't hear. Can because, you yeah. So uh, the medical the indications for a gestation surrogacy are important that a women without a uterus could be a congenital anomaly or absence of uterus, or 
she had an abnormal shape. It's a malarian uh, breast genesis or a malarian agenesis. Could be a right person for the uh, uh, surrogacy. Or a woman who had a recurrent implantation failure. Any What the number, they didn't any, say anything. And thirdly, who had previous recurrent pregnancy loss. And a uh, woman who had a previous uh, failure, more than three or four failures of implantation or a woman who had a medical illness or a, a clinical condition which makes her not carry the pregnancy to safety. So these are all the absolute indications for a surrogacy. And a certificate of medical indication necessitating a surrogacy will have to be issued by the district medical board for that particular patient to go ahead and avail surrogacy as well. And uh -huh. the eligibility of uh, uh, for surrogacy uh, there are two categories that has been given. One is an intending woman and an intending couple. So the uh, there are two categories that is mentioned. So a single woman can go in for surrogacy when the couple, commissioning couple can go ahead with it. So of course, they have to be duly married and the intending couple must not have any surviving child biologically or through an adoption for, for this. Of course, the the... The age, there has been contention in the rules as well, because some say 21, they are, there is a discussion right there in the rules about 21 years or 23 years. Uh, but of course, you have to present a marriage certificate for this. Five years after marriage, that is. Sorry, sir. Completed five years after marriage, then and then only yes, service. Sir, but then when there is, there is a discussion right there saying that when there is a new um, Mulierin anomaly, why wait for five years as well? So I guess they are yet to decide on the same as that well. That means yes, they correct. want to have another child. Madam, and about, uh, about the child, no, uh, if the, it is a physically uh, or mentally challenged the baby, they are having, hmm. they can have the surrogacy. Doctor, they can have surrogacy. Oh, they question. can have surrogacy. Okay, that may, if they have one child, they know they are not eligible to have another child, is it? According to the law. Yeah, but it is a severely impaired physical and mentally child they can have. So okay. we can have a surrogacy only once. And if the child is healthy, then no other children, you cannot have another child. See, madam, surrogate, we are right? talking about the commissioning couple. We are not talking about the surrogate mother. Surrogate mother is ever married. Uh, so, uh, it is uh, remote the, now. Yeah, I'm talking the for the commissioning for the couple. Is on the, on the, uh, the child clause is removed now. Only ever married is uh, given. Sir, it, no, sir, it is mentioned that ever married woman having a child of her own and between... No, it is now removed. It is now removed. Only ever married. No, the sir, child clause is from the ART rules March 2022, sir. No, no, it is ever married now. I'll okay. say, I will give you those. Yes. Yes. And the husband consent is required, and the surrogate yes, mother obviously. shall not shall not donate her egg. That's that's another thing. And which has always been there, just reiterating the same. And no woman shall act as a surrogate more than once and not more than three times for the same couple. Correct. Uh, uh, Priya, what if she's a Priya, what if she's a widow or a divorcee? Ah, can 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 do, can, can do. And but she has to give the appropriate legal papers, no, sir, for the same. Yeah, if she's a widow or a divorcee, she can do. There's one more uh, ambiguous statement. A couple, okay, say if the surrogate has failed three times to transfer, they have to change the surrogate, use it. Hmm. It says hmm. that the couple cannot attempt more than two. Uh, uh, transfers? Two like, successful transfers for the same couple. Okay, so that means they can bear two children out of surrogacy in their lifetime? No. Or single only only your transfer and you cannot attempt more than that. It's very ambiguous that statement. It yeah, says two attempts. It's ambiguous. Time. That's why I put it there. It, I didn't understand a certain yeah. statement that yeah. was there yeah. in that room. Lifetime through surrogacy. Or if I fail two attempts on two different surrogates, uh, for IVF, I cannot go in for another process anymore. That's a very ambiguous statement. Yes, it is. It is. They are promoting uh, adoption. <laughs> True. But that, that I didn't understand. That's why I put it there. Um, so, of course... Uh, a single woman can have surrogacy, right? A widow or a single woman? Yes. Can yes. A yes. single woman. She is called the intending woman. Means an Indian woman who is a widow or a divorcee a between... Divorce, yes. The age of 35 and 45 can go ahead and have a surrogate. 
See, the very sad part of it, you know, the single woman can get a thing, uh, living together, get it. But whereas a woman intending couple, you know, you're just cutting what down all the chances. What about alternate sexualities? Even they are sidelined. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then about the compensation for the surrogacy as well. It is uh, for a period of 36 months, uh, insurance amount, which is not it to mention, has been mentioned for 36 months. Again, it's again, we don't know what is the insurance amount that has to be taken. Do you, Tajisa, do you think the government would tell us what is the amount that we would have to take for them? It is not clear basically the amount they have not given, but it is for 36 months. It must be a sufficient amount to cover all the diseases, which is probably there. Can okay. Be. Sir, at this juncture, I had a question, but both for uh, donor suicide and for surrogacy. For couples who are married, Indian uh, origin couples, but who are only um, uh, overseas, uh, that OCI or what is it called? Yeah. yeah. That uh, dual, dual uh, citizenship. Ha. Huh. So they are also, is they are they allowed to have surrogacy or do yes, if, donations? Yeah, if they have dual citizenship, they are allowed. So there's nothing called dual citizenship as in unless you are, you see if they have given off their passport, suppose they are American passport holders, but they have an OCI, ah, they OCI. are allowed, right? Are they allowed? Uh, yes. OCI, yes, yes. PIO, because they don't have the term, it seems like dual passport holders or anything, mm. or either belong to this or outside. But if all the Americans, I mean, the Indian uh, people settle there, they, if they have an OCI, they can do anything from business to, except for farming and agricultural land, they are allowed. Are they allowed to avail art services now? Previously, it yes. wasn't Now they can? Yes, yes. Surrogacy, yes. they can? Surrogacy, they can? Yes, surrogacy, they can. Indian okay. origin people, they can. They are allowed. Okay, from wherever. UK, US, Europe. Yeah, whatever. Indian origin is important. Okay, okay. Oh, they are that, a OCI, really they can just take the services. Okay, oh. sir. Okay, sir. Priya, okay, okay. <laughs> I have one question. Yes. You, <laughs> so I want you to definitely address this PGD, PGS, you know. That's yes, just coming. Okay. Um, record maintenance, PGT. Ah. When is it allowed under the ART law? Is this what See, you wanted? Yes, because it says in one blind statement that we can only use it for inheritable uh, genetic yeah, disorder. I put it exact verbatim from the law. <laughs> exactly. So how can... Unless and, unle unless and until the history tells you about that, you, uh, I think you cannot go, basically. I'm so also not... Uh, the PGTA is almost abolished. Uh, uh, biopsies and what happens to us in a recurrent implantation failure anyway you know very select we're not doing it for all but what happens to that group if, if it's only going to be a pgtm which is for monogenic disorders what ha happens for aneuploidy screening or for improving our rates no you stuff? can do aneuploidy screening but provided yeah. you know yeah. that the previous child has got an anomaly or the parents yeah. have got no. some problem no. but then if you are doing just we don't know whether we can do it for advanced maternal age or for uh, recurrent implantation failures or recurrent pregnancy loss we, we are not sure whether we can use them so that's that's also ambiguous now they've only given uh, that one Kritika, what, what is the guideline now in nova in regard to this no, we have put a hold on routine pgtas we are doing pgtm only as of now okay Okay, and that's what my friends have all done who are, who are doing regular PGTA, have all put it on hold. Yes, because here they have really mentioned for known pre-existing heritable or genetic diseases only. So, so you can do it if the previous child was affected with a chromosomal aneuploidy and you want to see. And apart from that, for monogenic disorders, right? Yes, I guess. At least these two are allowed. Yes, yes, Fine. I guess. So, of course, there uh, it it never uh, they, it never was allowed, and it never is going to be allowed to have any uh, to have the determine the gender of the embryo at any point of stage. Priya, one last question, Priya. Yes, ma'am. Can we have both ART Bank and ART Clinic in the same setting? Uh, exactly what I wanted to know, and that's after Priya was mentioned it in our thing. I went ahead and uh, looked at the rules again. Here, that's why I put an underline here. It okay. says that a medical. This is quite an important slide. If you can read through it, it says that a medical geneticist or a gynecologist or a RMP 
shall not why would we abandon or disown exactly. or exploit a child born out of art i have no idea what the parents want us <laughs> uh, but it is mentioned for us as well in the art rule and it says that we cannot run an agency so i don't know whether an art bank will come under this ajay sir can you please throw some light on it for yeah us? basically they have given that it can be in one campus but the owner must be different different oh yeah. so address should be different sir address should be different institution should be different and the owner should no but i mean in one campus it can be there but the owner must be different likewise they have given i don't understand the logic behind this but they have given like so for example i got one but that so basic no basic intention i think the basic intention is that the confidentiality maintenance by art bank okay. uh, should be yeah likewise the aim must be So, sir, sir, one query: As an embryologist, can I be involved in an ART clinic as well and in an ART bank as well, or I cannot? As an employee, you can do. I think. Uh, can I ask one question? I thought I Please. heard the previous webinars that we could, uh, like you rightly said, we can have it in the same campus with if there are two buildings or whatever it is. And I also heard you can have it on different floors in the same building. Is that okay? Under two. Yeah, obviously. Hospitals. Yeah, we can have two hospitals in uh, same building. No. likewise no, no, no. it is there no 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 the same no we cannot uh, we can have two different floors suppose i have my art lab in the second floor and i keep my bank in the third floor is that okay but the but owner I, must be different madam owner must be different that will change the owner but <laughs> <laughs> can be done priya priya can be done that can be done can because be done. in maharashtra they have separate floor separate hospital so they have oh. separate that yeah obviously okay. that's what i told no because for pcp entity see for pcp entity we we can move the machine in uh, in the campus say for example i am having uh, my hospital on third floor and uh, priya ma'am is having on fourth floor i cannot move from third to fourth but i can move from a whole third so we can have two separate hospitals on two separate floors likewise it can be done okay no, okay i am going to ask a very tricky question what if i do my theater work on the second floor and shift all the gamets to the third floor and have an art bank but the both uh, floor must be registered in the same uh, hospital they are that clean is there, that is also done one last question the art bank bank it's been you know written everywhere it's only talking about seven uh, in this last 96 pages that was forwarded it only talks about cryo preservation of seven not one place as it mentioned who said also they have mentioned who said also they have mentioned who said so no, sir mentioned. but it is mentioned here that the uh, the art bank will only register the donor and then probably we have to recruit the donor through the art bank and we might have to stimulate and uh, that, that doesn't uh, make sense uh, aspirate the o sites i don't think the art bank is going to freeze any of the o sites yeah, because they don't have facility to retrieve it no yeah. art bank don't have facility bank is nothing but an office and screening yes. clinic but whereas the equipment for a pickup and everything will be done by yeah. the clinic yes correct dr uh, gopinath so both of us are in an institution so can we have the bank art bank and the art clinic in our hospital in the same yeah. institution no the same institution. institution we can have it we but will have a different uh, ownership what it is given as different ones according to the draft art regulation bill art clinic and art bank have to be two separate independent institutions and should be registered independently with different address identity and organizational structure no no That's it can be in the it can be in the same building on a different floor that they, they, they have clarified it but they have to be registered they have to pay the 5 lakhs okay. So, the <laughs> reality bank pays only one lakh, sir. One lakh, one lakh per bank. One lakh. So six lakh, five lakh plus one lakh. Mm -hmm. Husband and wife uh, different so owner. I guess uh, sorry, <laughs> sorry that, to that will be a problem. Husband and wife, ah. there is a problem. You cannot do that. Like there is a scam. Yeah, yeah. That they are very clear. Husband yes. and wife yes. cannot own a clinic in a bank. Before oh. Dr. Rajapriya pushes us out, I think we must wind up this amazing discussion we've had today, and I think we all had uh, excellent take-home points. Gopinath sir, would you like to why, uh, uh, say the uh, finishing? See the law. The law means we have to obey, but only thing is that it requires lot of clarity on certain guidelines. so as we one typical example is the number of co sites which we they are not very, very clear about it so we the guidelines whatever they have just asked for the public opinion within about some two weeks we all can send it 
and then ultimately what turns out to be the final law whether you like it or not we have to follow it up correct thank Thanks, you sir thank you thank you very that's much that's and thank you vikrant sir that. and priya madam thank you very much on behalf of all of the panelists thank i can for giving my gratitude to you thank you so much uh, uh, i just want to uh, uh, get the kind of a nutshell comment see until now a lot of centers were able to do financial advantages for patients like we used to have the option of egg sharing which is no longer possible when they formed excess embryos would we would be able to give them for donation and thereby economically help them again that's no no longer possible and uh, similarly we are forced now to do a very limited stimulation of an oocyte donor and one oocyte donor is only for a single commissioning couple that cannot go for more than uh, it's like a single donor Sorry, can you repeat? I think I missed. Am I audible? It. Yes. No. Now you are audible. No. Okay. So yeah. 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 No. So what? What I want to say? Speak. Yeah. The economic you your advantages beat. are no longer. Uh, I think I have some net-related issues. Mm. I just want to have your video. You cut off your video and speak. You'll be a little. Okay. Yeah. Fine. Yeah. Am I better audible now? One yeah. Second. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yes. I just wanted to make a comment that the financial advantages which we were giving to our patients through embryo donation, through egg sharing, all this is lost. Like a single oocyte donor. being able to help more than a couple is now all now getting lost now this is going to change the economics of a given ivf program obviously right? yes but then no. the loan the cycles will be more costly now the cycles will be more costly it will go to 5 lakh per cycle yes now i just request each one of the panelists and the both the moderators to give one for uh, one change as a recommendation be going into paper so we can uh, sum up this and put up as a recommendation by this panel <laughs> each one of you just a one single thing which you would recommend we can start with dr gopinath from the moderator to the panelists okay gopinath sir sir is not there i would say recar cut down the cost for the fee structure the one thing i would like to add up as you rightly discussed priya that we will be definitely uh, we can transfer the use and uh, the embryos which are left behind from the consent of the couple which can cut off the cost for our poor women who wants to have a baby that is very important that we can have a recommendation in the point view point of a women because of the social taboo of uh, infertility and the cost yeah. wise and poor patients because we yeah, can it... send a, uh, the consent form signed by the couple that they are donating these embryos yeah that's madam one is to one ratio should be changed basically the donor must have the, the right to give yes. to certain couples maybe 9 or 10 previously it was like that and i think only one she can give the be the donor probably at least three times she can be a, a donor as of now yeah. law says only one uh, that that, that should be changed that should be changed sir can you can say can uh, suggest one point that we should recommend to that the law for a change in the law sir When there are a no lot of points which we have discussed all of it <laughs> can be put in <laughs> not <laughs> one plenty <laughs> i want i think i would want to run an art bank and art clinic for the just for the simple safety of the whole uh, process and uh, you know just for the simple safety of the whole process and to ensure that things go well and the efficiency of the lab is maintained and even the gametes and everything art bank and art clinic i think It, it it should be allowed you can have separately but it should be allowed in established uh, institutions which have been doing work for many years and things with some leniencies i think that should be the way you mean to say the owner can they be have to re, they have to reconsider the registration fee for the sake of the patients true obviously obviously so one the owner i think any sorry if the donor is not going to get any monetary benefit it will be difficult to get one donor for uh, yeah obviously also the law can fix the monetary compensation we are supposed to give a uniform order yeah that yeah. 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 you cannot go 
this much, singleton this much. They can have a common fee structure for all programs, you know, for IVF, IUI. Madam, but that will that will that will that will be a more problematic for all of us because if say they fix the 1.5 lakh per cycle and we are having more facilities in one center, that is not uh, coping. It's Pardon? good only for compensation. They cannot run our practice. Ha, yes. Yeah, yeah. It can only because be if and only for compensation, it is correct. Yes. See, another important difference I have seen this. I have been running a surrogacy clinic for quite some time. What I used to do, I used to put the commissioning patients and then they... Sir, you're, sir, you're muted. You are mute, sir. I always put them together uh, in front of the law and then they, they sit and uh, discuss and then they just take a plan and they uh, sort of sign the contract and with the contract paper, they walk into my clinic. I only do the scientific part. Now, it is not possible because they have put the, air, the surrogate clinic as a part of the agreement. So that means we are we are taking the ownership. I think Kritika will know very clearly how we have been running. So yes, we have very clearly we do only the clinical part and the agreement part and the legal part is taken by the both the commissioning and the patient. Whereas now in this rule we are a part of it. That is a major Why difference. Why not the ART bank can take care of all these legal issues, no, sir? But unfortunately, ARP bank, take care of unfortunately, bank, ARP bank, bank is our Saragasi cousin Saragasi. sister. <laughs> Gopi sir, we are doing uh, because the legal part is taken care of by the the surrogate lawyers. So we are only taking part of the, the claim, the management part. So we are not involved in the monetary benefit at all of the surrogate mother. Right? Exactly. Mm. That is what has been happening all through. But today, you know, that you are liable to... Um, commission them and you are liable to take an agreement and you are a part and parcel of the party in the agreement. Yes. It as per the new law. So then it that means if you register for as a surrogacy clinic, you will have to take uh, the onus of uh, uh, recruitment, the money to the health, everything of that patient, of the surrogate. So Correct again, another, another five lakhs for registration, is it? Yeah, registration is five lakh again. <laughs> they love the 5 lakh value, I guess. <laughs> what is expected to roll in? Like, when it, from which date is this getting implemented, all this registration process? 25 January plus 90 days. Okay. 90 days. 25 January plus 90 days means 25 January, February, March, April. 25 March, April. So, but still now we haven't got which address to get the application posted, things like That's that. their headache, madam. It's their headache. Yeah. <laughs> no, after after all the information goes up to April 2nd, then they'll sit down and send us the information. No, 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 basically, once the, see, once the rule comes, we have to register. After it no, basically, I, I, I just wanted to say that almost all the procedures has been started now. All the bodies they have formed, but they're just uh, waiting for the declaration. Everything okay. is final. That oh. means they are not going to listen to our changes, is it? No, no, they no, will no, listen, no. madam. The, registry listening. only, madam. Registry only. I'm telling about national board and state board. Thank you so much. I think not about the draft. Yeah. Panel one has done a great job, and I guess uh, Dr. Priya will try and sit down and put down all these recommendations in paper. And uh, through Indian Fertility Society, I think we will take this effort forward by putting up this as a, a package, uh, but listing each doctor's name. And they are saying more the numbers merrier. So I guess each of the doctors also can put down their individual comments uh, to refine the bill better to help us give good service to the patients at the same time give the financial advantage and a wider availability because all this is coming into the question. So thank you so much moderators and panelists. It's been excellent having all your expert comments. Yes, Mark, Can I say something? Yeah, thank you. Yeah, I, I convey my gratitude on behalf of all of us to uh, Prem Lata Madam, then Dhanlakshmi Madam and Rajpriya Madam for involving all of us and thank you uh, Gopina Sir and Priya Ma'am for all of the things. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you. you for your cooperation. Thank you, Gopi Dutt, sir, for, for the wonderful please, questions. No, and thank please you, vote, my panelists, no. for the amazing... Yes, yes Charmila, ma'am. Charmila, ma'am. No, please vote for Ajay. He's standing for vice president. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Shall I, shall I appeal that? 
Okay, this is my humble request to all of you. To those who have not voted, kindly vote for me. There are two uh, votes for West Zone. Kindly vote uh, one for me, and second is your choice. Thank you very much. <laughs> thank you so much. Thank you, thank you. And thank you for thank allowing you, me to say that. Thank you for allowing me to say that. Thank you. Thank you, Prem Lata, ma'am, for the opportunity. Priya, can we 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 will be able to listen to the other panel, or should we leave and join? Please, please continue. <laughs> no, no rule for that, ma'am. No rule. Please stay back. Stay back. <laughs> Thank you. We can stay, right? Yeah, yeah. Please, please, please. Now we move on to panel two. This is a more pertinent uh, panel because uh, this applies to the impact of infertility practice for the general gynecologist and most uh, infertile couples. Uh, will continue to go to the regular gynecologist because very economic iui service and basic workup was being done them by them however to do the basic workup and to provide service in the form of iui now our registration becomes mandatory so let's know more about it uh, we have two expert moderators dr charmila and dr aarti pari handling the show and i request dr premalata to be the chairperson for this panel one dr premalata is a vibrant president of oxy and she is the consultant a uh, senior consultant uh, doing tremendous service at mehta hospital chennai she is also the former director in charge of iog and we've all known her uh, doing great service um, leading the microsurgery department uh, at uh, kmc in the beginning and uh, it's uh, a privilege to call premalata madam to be the chairperson for this uh, particular panel i request you to take over the proceedings madam okay thank you rajapriya for your uh, introduction it was really i was uh, we had a very brainstorming panel discussion on uh, uh, for art clinicians the art bill for the practicing art clinicians actually i was we were i was very struck we to know more and more about all this art bank art clinic the difference between them uh, the all the what the art bill says about the number of oversight to be retrieved can be given back the single donor so it was elaborately the level 2 Uh, at a center what they have to do it has been discussed now the second panel is mainly on uh, panel discussion of a practicing gynecologist as we all know anybody with a md degree or a djo they uh, once they come confront infertile patients after some treatment they are very happy to give them a choice of uh, going for an uh, iui and so very rarely iui donor some and all these things so now we are confronted with so many doubt what to do with an iui if whether we can uh, uh, the someone can be prepared somewhere else and we can uh, do the same insemination our clinic should it be registered so many doubts are there so to know about this we have panel of uh, all uh, specialists and to moderate the panel we have charmila ayavu and dr arti pari can i uh, get the charmila ayavu is a very well known person she was the vice president she is the vice president elect of foxy 2024 she was the first chairperson of clinical research committee 20, 2019 and 18 icog governing council member and she has been a very vibrant president menstrual hygiene management consortium joint secretary gestosis india association and she is the past secretary of trichy uji society and she has been the joint treasurer of ifs tamil nadu chapter now over to dr acharmila and the next chairperson is uh, moderator is dr arthi pare she is a consultant in uh, manu hospital simar koyamathur she is trained in university hospital of coventry and warwickshire she is in united kingdom for a long time and uh, she is a invited speaker and panelist in fertility cmes at conferences she is a member of isr she is a member of indian fertility society and fertility preservation society of india she is a joint secretary of koyamathur chapter of tabisar and ifs tamil nadu chapter over to dr arthi and dr Sharmila, I want to take over the session. Thank you Thank so you, much, ma'am. Yeah, Arthi, please continue. Thank you, madam. Uh, also, I'd like to thank the Oxy team for uh, inviting us uh, to conduct this panel. I'd like to introduce my lovely panelists for the day for the second panel. Can I have the slides, please? Yes, ma'am. Yes, the first panelist, Dr. Mala Raj, a well-known laparoscopic surgeon. She is the um, 
Managing Director of Firm Hospitals. She has done her undergraduate from Kilpock Medical College and post-graduation from SRMC. She has done her diploma in endoscopic surgery and reproductive medicine from Germany and aesthetic gynec training from California. She has held various positions in various chapters and presently she is the secretary IAG Tamil Nadu chapter. And recently she has backed the best Tamil Nadu chapter award for that and the best uh, membership, I mean, the, I think committee member award for her uh, excellency in this field. And uh, she is the most sorted operating faculty in various conferences till date. Uh, next uh, panelist will be Dr. Katpaham Ban. She has done her DGO in DNB. She has got more than 10 years of experience in the field of women's health with special emphasis on fertility, management of high-risk pregnancies and minimally invasive gynec procedures. She's an active participant in teaching and training courses across South India and has given lectures and presented papers in regional, national, and international conferences. She's a member of Federation of Obstetricians and Gynecology of India and Association of Tamil Nadu Members of RCOG. She's a faculty for the annual MRCOG exam course and a recipient of the prestigious AICC RCOG Traveling Fellowship in Gynae Endoscopy. Our next panelist is Dr. Indumati Joy, Senior Consultant in IVF and Gynae Endoscopy in Nova IVF, Chennai. Graduated from Kilpok Medical College and Biju from uh, Stanley Medical College. She's done her DNB from Sundara Medical Foundation and she's done her fellowship in reproductive medicine in Ayaram Triple M in 2011 and her special areas of interest are minimal stimulation protocols in IVF, male infertility and gynae endoscopy. Next is Dr. Vivek Madi. He's done his uh, MBBS from Madras University and MD from Manipal University. Uh, he's done his various uh, bachelor and PG diploma in uh, law and uh, his honorary sec he was the honorary secretary of IMA North Chennai branch. Presently is the consultant and director of RK Malati Hospital Chennai. Welcome you all. And now I request Dr. Chamila ma'am to start the panel. Thank you so much, Aarti. I would like to thank Premlata ma'am and Dr. Dhanalakshmi ma'am for the opportunity, as well as uh, dear Rajapriya. She always creates a storm and that first panel was very stormy. We are quite simple people. We are having a very uh, simple panel where we know that most of it has been discussed, but we'd like, like to have some clarity for that uh, Pavam gynecologist who's sitting in a small center somewhere, doesn't know what to do, uh, doesn't know about registration, and she's doing such good work, but uh, nobody is there to help her. And suddenly she's put, she's put in a soup here, where she has been told, uh, do something because you are doing a procedure which needs lots of uh, monitoring by the central and the state authorities. And Aarti has uh, introduced our esteemed panelists, Dr. Mala, Dr. Karpahambal, Dr. Indumuthi and Dr. Vivek, we'd like to welcome you to the panel. We'd like to keep the answers as short as possible because we're running quite short of time. We have discussed most of it. So we need to know what the level one clinic needs to know. We, do, we have already discussed the level two in, in like lots of discussions had gone on that. So I'll take up this case scenario. This uh, madam is Dr. M. She's aged around 50. She started her ERT clinic 10 years back when obstetrics became very less for her. Now she's doing uh, up to intrauterine inseminations in her clinic and just not registered with any authority till now. And now this 2022, they've dropped that bomb that the national board will take measures to develop new policies in the area of ART. It will assist the state board boards in accreditation, supervision and regulation of services of ART clinics and banks in the country. This bomb has been dropped on us in January. So the state board will supervise the accreditation and regulation and services of ART clinics and banks in the respective states and urine or urine, union territories. So Dr. Mala, like to watch which category this Dr. M's clinic will belong now, according to the new bill. How will you define the different levels of ART clinics? Priya has already done that, but I would like to ask you again. And should an ART bank should matter to her, a person who's having a level one clinic? Mala? Yeah. See, the, now the most important thing is she has to register her clinic in level one. So her, she has been doing IUI, but the clinic is not registered. As per the recent rule, she has to register her clinic as level one by paying that one lakh and also fitting into the criteria. Uh, like, uh, you know, like what are the criteria for the level one? Like they, I mean, of course, gynecologist is there, counselor is there, and they should have a proper IUI lab. The IUI lab also has certain standards. Like, you know, like they should have, as per the re recent rule, you should also have a, a laminar airflow. No, uh, that will be dealt with like, we would need to know like uh, does she need to do yeah so she has, she to, has do. to 
practice of fertility where she is doing quite a lot of iuis then it ha she has to definitely register her lab if not a center for iui if not she can refer it to a place where they are doing iui and where it is registered so that she can take her patients and do them now without registrations i don't think so she can continue this way her practice okay so like dr kim pundavari said probably the other center should have her name there that she is going to come yeah. for iuis there otherwise she cannot go and do in another center also her name has to be put in that clinic there that has yes. to be made very clear to her and what about the art bank now how will she get donor samples for doing a donor iui yeah art bank again from a registered art bank she can take but then again she can't do it in her place right she has to only take it to the place where it is registered and then she can do it there no the thing is can she take the sample from the art bank and do it in her center no she cannot do it in her center because her center is not recognized for an iui no, no, she, no she has ap applied for a level 1 clinic and she has gotten accreditation for level 1 now she wants to do donor iui in her center where she is doing husband iui anyway so what will she do with a uh, will she need search for an art bank i'm asking for a donor sample yes yes definitely she can take it from an art bank which is registered and do it in her center i mean clinic if she it is registered for the level 1 now so she cannot have like a level 2 or art bank where she stores her semen samples and do that is out of the picture she has to take it from the art bank and do it in her center yes, that is yes, all, that yes. is okay yeah she Thank cannot you. she can yeah she can't that is she has to get a sample from a registered art bank and do it in her center that is clear right yeah. okay Uh, dr karpa hambal like uh, how should she apply now uh, that, that was one question put in the chat box uh, box also should she register according to people mala said very clearly that we have to register so how will she apply and any fees needed dr karpa hambal she is there yeah she was there okay, you need to unmute yourself dr karpa hambal please un unmute please unmute yourself karpa hambal unmute Yes, yes. Now we are audible. Yeah. Yeah. Good evening, everyone. Yes, uh, we have been listening to the previous discussion as well. So we have to register uh, the uh, the forms. Everything will be available by the end of April, according to the new gazette. So once we get the forms, we have to submit the forms to the appropriate authority of the state. The form is called Form Three, which for which we apply for a registration for the as an ART clinic. So oh. in that, we have to specifically mention as level one. level 1 okay. because there is a column in the form which specifically says level of application I mean level okay. of clinic so uh, in that we have to specifically mention as level 1 all the details in the forms have to be filled it's a very complete form which has all the details of the doctor as well as the people uh, who are working in the center and uh, they have to submit the form the appropriate authority will come for inspection to that center and once they come for inspection and if they are happy with the uh, uh, policies and procedures going on in the clinic they will give us a registration certificate and that will go <laughs> and that that comes in the next part dr karpahambal the point i wanted to make is please don't wait for somebody in the authority this thing to come and tell you do the registration yes, go exactly. ahead meet your uh, joint director or deputy director in your city or town ask them for the saying that you are, you are doing iuis in your clinic get the certificate get the get the application form it will be in the website yes. fill it and submit it do not wait for the authority to reach you and ask you whether you have registered that's going to cause problem in the future so you have to go and do it by yourself not knowing the law is not a excuse at all you will be penalized so you have to go ahead and do that and as dr karpa hambal said you have to pay 1 lakh for that 1 lakh you have not changed that that 1 lakh is there so what are the documents we need to submit for a level 1 clinic dr indumathi uh see uh, the form 3 uh, which they have um, uh, published yes, yes, to yes. apply for art uh, uh, clinic it gives a very clear instruction as to the personal details first like the name and what the uh, what is the qualification and uh, the address the date of birth like that and after that uh, the address and uh, what is the setup they have and is it a government one or a semi government one so everything the form is uh, very uh, yeah. madam aarti will be dealing with the criteria and all that but basic documents, the documents we need to is only personal documents and the address proof and then uh, her qualification proof and where the center is and how long they have been having and what is the accreditation if at all they had accreditation before with any other body there what evidence they have for that that is all they should be carrying and also of course the regarding the 
uh, payment, they have to take the check for that. That's all. Uh, actually, they want the MTP Act. They want the certificate of the PCP entity. They want the biomedical rules. The CEA has to be submitted and an NOC from the fire safety department. All these documents will have to go even if you're a level one clinic. There's no differentiation between level yeah, one and no level two. For differentiation them. between level one and, one level, and level two. two. You have yeah. to go, go ahead and take all this. And as Dr. Priya said in the first panel, if you're not doing MTPs, it's okay if you don't have, but you have to, the authority needs to know that you're not doing MTPs in your place. Don't do even your first time to MTP without informing the authorities. Or you have to have a, uh, uh, actually a, pay, a board put in your center that the MTPs will be conducted in particular place if you're doing it with the, even the tablet. So be very careful. You will escape with the ART, you will get caught with the MTP Act or the PCPC Immunity Act because you've got gone to enough centers for inspe inspection. Basically, and see the reason they, get uh, they are planning to practice in that clinic uh, according oh. to that act, they should have the evidence. And the no, 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 no ma'am. Uh, no, ma'am. Uh, in uh, PCP entity, we go for inspections in other states. From When you're from south, we go to north and west. We have gone for inspections. We see how they interpret. They will go for the PCP entity act, but they'll go in search of the MTP register. So you have to be very clear in telling them. Doing it, then they needn't have, isn't it? No, no you need, needn't, needn't have, but you have to tell them very clearly. I do not have an MTP yeah. because I, we have seen gynecologists in that stressful situation. They just say something or the other and they will not get caught to the PCP in the act. They'll get caught to the MTP. That's why I'm saying to be very clear what you have and what you don't have. Yeah. Make it very clear when the inspection team comes. Do not get upset or stressful, stressed or angry or anything. You have to maintain all this under the new law. Keep it ready. Don't uh, at that time don't say I didn't get the NOC from the fire safety when they're coming for inspection. You will be landing in problem because of that and not because of your ART clinic. So small small things will matter at the uh, when you when they're coming for inspection. So Dr. Vivek, suppose the the application is rejected, then what? Yeah. So even if you get rejected, it's no problem. Within one month's time, you can go on an appeal and. Before getting rejected, it's important to find out what is the reason for the rejection. Uh, rejection. And according to that, make certain recommendation, make those changes, and then reapply. And uh, you could uh, uh, still get your center accredited. It's important you have a good dialogue with the... Uh, Appropriate with the, authority. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, with, the, uh, with the authority so that uh, you can get it done as, as, uh, as they want. It is sometimes the law you might be ignorant of. It's important the authorities tell you these are things follow documents to be uh, submitted and you can submit those and get it clarified. Yeah. So as you said, within 90 days of rejection, you should yeah. get an, a, a, a reply from the appropriate authority of yeah. why it happened. And suppose they apply again, should they pay the one lakh again? No, it's not. It's within, not needed. If you, it is within uh, 90 days, they don't have to pay. Yeah. Within, within that time gap. Yeah. 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 So sometimes people say like I forgot I went off somewhere and after 90 days no. you apply please remember you have to play again one lakh. Yeah, latch is there it has happens if you latch because, because sir, it's happened with the PCP entity people it's say they have forgotten the date of re-registration and when they then they'll go and say like I went off here or there and the authority does not consider that at all yes, same yes. thing will happen with the ART also it so be very so it's important you keep the date and uh, and uh, apply within okay. the Later time, time. Because even if you don't remember your birthday, remember this because this becomes more important than as, the, as the days goes on now. And uh, suppose you are paid and your resubmission also has been rejected, it will not be refunded. Remember yes. that. Your one yes. lakh is gone. So yeah. that's why when you submit itself, be very clear on what you're going to submit and when the authorities come. So what you have seen is people get very stressed out when a team comes for inspection. It should never happen. You know, clear in your legalities, nothing will happen because most of the authorities who come are quite reasonable and they will try to help out the center that we have and seen. And also many. we have to uh, train the paramedics and the staff nurses. Ah, very important. How to behave how to behave when anybody comes for inspection. Usually these girls are uh, uh, very small or they have very less experience. So they, yes, they, they panic as soon as they come. Yes, and sir. when you talk about what you practice every day, I don't think there will be much difficulty much in uh, telling them. So the practice itself should be in the way the ART clinic is supposed to be. Then it yes. won't be difficult for them. Yes, That's yeah. what I feel. Because most of the time when the paramedic says something and the, and the director or the owner says something, now both are different. Director and owner are different. But uh, most of the places, both are same. So they say something and the paramedic says something. Uh, 
it's difficult so confused. very important that we we also educate the people around us as to what we are and what is the, what is expected of them actually that's a, that's a very valid well, the, point the, so, the, purpose, yes, the, the purpose of the uh, authorities are coming and uh, inspecting is to make sure all your yeah. staff are aware of the documentation yes because documentation the document, they should understand that they are not coming to the it is a documentation that is going to uh, save the doctors so all you have to do is make sure the documents are, are all kept uh, properly are Proper. uh, uh, the books are kept the uh, registers are maintained and that's all they want to make sure if everything is yes. all right uh, so it's better we train our staff very well very well yes sir. the perfect it's almost like a pph drill or whatever drill drill it yeah. up and you that yeah. they- it very clear okay uh, mala what about the government centers if they want they're doing iui should they register and they, should they play the application fees the uh, government center also i believe they also have to register and play the uh, application uh, fees but then uh, i believe when they have to renew the center they don't have to you know pay again no no the first itself they need not pay at all they don't have to pay is it no no only for the pc pendative they have an ultrasound machine they are asking them to pay but not for art centers they're doing up to level 1 there's no need to pay to the government Okay. But uh, for, but you have to register and you have to send the mandatory report every month. That is that you have to do. They oh, can't I, say I'm the government center, so I will not send the procedures list here, and I will not send the report is not accepted. That they have to do. Register and report. The steps are the same. Only thing is the payment is exempted for them. Only the payment is exempted for them. Okay. So Kathmandu, like, uh, how do you renew uh, after five years, and what are the fees for renewal, and what about if the renewal is rejected? how to renew so after 5 years actually within the 60 days of expiry date itself we can apply for uh, renewal of registration so within 60 days we can apply and keep everything ready so they will give a regist- new registration from the day of the expiry for another 5 years uh, uh, rule says and you, again the same form form 3 has to be submitted for uh, renewal of registration renewal. with all the documents everything from ஒரிஜினல்ஜினல்ஜினல்ஜினல்ஜினல்ஜினல்ஜினல்ஜினல்ஜினல்ஜினல்ஜினல்ஜினல்ஜினல்ஜினல்ஜினல்ஜினல்
they say the name of that person is not in your certificate how are they doing the scans so that's why when you are putting the initial application itself put all the names possible who you think will come to your center so that you do not have problems uh, when an inspection team comes and remember that even if you are going to change your center from one place to the other you have to inform the authorities before you sir, transfer do not change your center without informing the authorities that becomes almost like a it becomes a big medico legal problem then so you have to apply a fresh somewhere, new uh, yes ma'am somewhere it's within, within th before 30 days they should yes. estimate yes. Yes. before okay. yes yes before 30 days of whatever you the change of your employee change of your center change of the name whatever you do you have to inform the authority before you do that otherwise you will be legally punished so yeah. dr vivek yes sir the registration is for the address of the place and the person who don't take responsibility yes. for any of the mistakes that's yes. the main thing they yes, they, they want to pinpoint that person pinpoint who... and so that they can take action yes. that's the whole the whole reason is registration purpose is to take action yes sir so how do we provide information for a level one clinic to an authority? Like what are the documents to be maintained? Like should we inform even the IUIs which we are doing to an appropriate yes. authority? Yes, yes. It is important that uh, every procedure that you are uh, undertaking should be informed. And uh, with the uh, address of the, uh, even the doctor, uh, the person who is doing it should be in, uh, informed. Okay. The person and the patient should be informed every uh, by, by fifth day of every month it has to go yes, to the national yes, registry yes. and now you have to send to the local authority also state yes. authority also you have to send now so this is the form which they have given now uh, there are lots of mistakes in this but uh, we are trying to fill up all this and send and uh, for even for IUIs once the uh, uh, law comes into place and we are asked to register our clinics you have to send a report to the authorities uh, by the 5th of every month and this the is the same as the pcp and act uh, what you're doing all you same, same. Have you have to send both at the same time yes. so Marmila, the doc ah. Marmila, can i interrupt yeah yeah can yes. you go back to that same thing that uh, report which we are sending in pc the previous yeah now yeah. between art advised by the doctor and art procedure recommended does it that does the statement have a different meaning no difference. You do whatever you want. That's no, what it means. ART procedure advice is ICSI means ART procedure recommended becomes ICSI again, right? Yeah, yeah. Same you write. Yes. They want to see twice probably. Outcome discarded bar continued. Uh, suppose uh, you have not used those embryos. You think they are damaged. Then you are discontinuing. Discarding. Yeah. Continuing. Yeah. You are, the embryos are frozen or whatever. That is what level 2. Level 1, you don't mention that there at all. No, even in a level one, suppose the IUI was not successful. Suppose on the day of doing the IUI, suppose Samples are good good. Problem, you have not done the procedure. You have to tell them that the procedure was discontinued for whatever the reasons are. Yeah, yeah, you can do that. Because uh, basically they want how the procedure went on. Whether went it went on, for yes. a procedure or it was discarded at discarded some point. Discarded, discontinued. Yes. Sir, discontinued. Uh, that's what I'm saying. There are so much confusion in this day. We write whatever we want. We don't know whether the authority him, himself or herself checks that also. We don't know what's happening. Um, oh, one, one, one question, ma'am. Yeah. Uh, the previous, uh, can you show the previous slide, please? Hmm. So they were asked for the next previous one. They were asked for uh, if, uh, I mean, MTP advice is given. Hmm. So suppose doing next month, she might be okay. Then if it's a missed abortion, then if you have proceeded, when should we intimate? Then you see uh, discarded MTP advice or discarded in the sense this is like uh, a missed abortion, right? That's what they're meaning there if it's an IUI, right? Okay. Missed abortion. So and you have to mention there. Sometimes it might be the next month. You write awaited yes, or awaited. Pen pending, pending, oh. right? Something okay. like a pending. Show us the okay. next slide as well, Charmila, the next one. Now here it's like a total uh, thing. So you write about. It is, a, the, it is a whole statistics of your center. How many have done? How many, like, they were the old patients who were recruited in the previous month and how they are ongoing now? And during the month, how much you started and you registered them? The total number of these two together, number of patients who became positive and the success rate. So even this, yeah. this month yeah. is a monthly report? Yes, this, also, monthly this also report. has to go. This also has to go. Both. Yeah, the monthly report, all the patients who come in will have to be registered. That is the yes. what they want. Yeah, yeah. Anybody who registered for a procedure, you have to mention in your report. And here you see sex of the baby is mentioned in the last point. Please, yeah. that, 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 that is a catch point everywhere. If you have too many babies with male babies, you will be under the scanner. Remember that. 
anything. You can't do anything, but you'll be under the scanner. Somebody from the department. Oh, will the other doctors are making use of the center for uh, doing IUIs. Even their um, uh, patients' details also have yes, to be entered, and yes, the outcome also has to be entered. Madam, the registered yes, center, whatever procedures are under being undone there, all they the have to go have all, to all, all, and all. Also, they should be informed. Yes, ma'am. All of them should be informed. So, what are the documents we maintain, Dr. Vivek? I think this will be the last slide. Yeah. Documents we maintained in a level one clinic. Uh, same thing, I think Priya said in our first panel, but we'll just go through it. Yeah, the every uh, yeah, the, it is all about the uh, address of the uh, of the couple uh, of the person who is undergone. So, so what happens to that person is to be maintained, and uh, so that a follow up can be done. And uh, all these records have to be kept for ten years. That's important. Uh, from uh, so you have to have a follow up. That's important. So you can you can either have it uh, maintained in a. Uh, uh, in a um, uh, digital form and that's what I would uh, say is easier to rather than having it in a, a yeah. record. There's one important thing you have to maintain even the sonographic plates and slides. Yes, please. Yes. So if, if you have done an IUI and an ultrasound guidance you have to put that picture there. Remember yes, that. Because they want to make sure main thing that uh, the sex has not been uh, disclosed to the couple. That's the purpose of the whole thing. Yes sir. So, and at least one copy of the act should be in your clinic. Remember that take a Xerox copy now and keep it now only so that you don't forget because that also was a point of contention and an inspection where one officer went and asked the gynecologist, where is the copy of the APC penalty act? And when they didn't have it, they put it as a negative mark point there. So keep yeah, a copy because, of the act. Yes, yeah, sir. that's because people should not say I was ignorant. I did ah, not know yeah, that the yeah. act was passed in this time and uh, I was mm. keeping old records, all that. <laughs> they don't want to make sure ignorance of law is no excuse. No excuse. Perfect. Because if you do IUI without ultrasound guidance, then, then, don't, don't, then if you're not taking an ultrasound, don't mention it. say no ultrasound down. Okay. But if you have done it, you have to put a plate you there. You have to keep the ultrasound of the follicular study also? No need, no need. Only for the procedure. Done under ultrasound guided IUI, you have to keep that picture. Yes, sir. Yes, if you've done it. So this RT will take care of. There's so much of doubt and fear. Will you do? Will you prepare the samples outside and do an IUI in your center? And uh, this, I think, uh, RT should take care of this because there's one point in that application form. Infrastructure facilities available at level one ART clinic, point number 17. Do you have an in-house facility for processing semen? Yes, no. If no, whether outsourcing. So that means we can prepare the samples outside and do IUI in your center. I take it like that, but I would like Aarti to clarify in her panel. Thank you so much for a patient hearing. I would like to thank all the panelists for a wonderful input. Thank you so much for making it so clear. Thank you. Thank you. Sir. Yeah, thank you, John. Thank you. Thank you very much. The slides are visible. Yeah. Yes. Yes, sir. Yeah. Thank you, Chamila, ma'am. I'll uh, proceed as you said. So this is about the level one clinic, which we've already discussed earlier. So the license part, application, registration, renewal, you have completed. So I'm going to talk uh, more about the qualification of employees uh, and facilities and equipments and maintaining records. So the employees, there was a question in the uh, chat box about the uh, gynecologist qualification for level one. So they were confused with, uh, you know, training under uh, registered ART clinic and doing the pickups, everything. So for running a level one ART clinic, just a postgraduate degree in Obson Gyne is more than enough. So the next uh, thing is, we, we, when we have a gynecologist in the center, what are the duties and responsibilities of the gynecologist running the center? So I'd like uh, Dr. Karpahambal to tell us about this. Is she there? Fine. Uh, so can you hear me ahead. now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can we you can. hear me? Yeah, go ahead, go ahead. Dr. Aarti? Yeah, yeah, I Dr. can hear you. I can hear you. Aarti? Karpa Amal is the star. Aarti, can you hear me? Yes, ma'am. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Basically, basically, initial history taking of the couple is very important. And clinical examination. Clinical examination. That is the physical examination of the female. They have not mentioned the male. So we don't examine the male. And we recommend appropriate testing for all infections, medical, 
and interpretation and treatment basic ultrasound scanning and endoscopy those are the, those are the requirements for a gynecologist responsibilities yeah. yeah thank you so much so those were the responsibilities but when you say the duties of the clinic it is again the duty of the gynecologist as madam mentioned we have certain registers that has to be followed the details of the patient and sending the details to the government as such that has to be again the duty of the gynecologist because she is running the center so when we explain about that i think um, anyone can say but probably these are the pictures which was already mentioned consent forms is more important i have seen many patients carrying the consent form with them along with the lab reports when they come to me from the other hospitals so we have to make sure that consent form should be kept in the clinic and it should not be given to the patients even pcp entity form uh, form if i have seen with the people coming down with scan reports so please make sure the consent forms are very important when you do an iui of a husband or a donor whatever it is but that has to be maintained with the patient's case sheet along uh, in the i mean in the center for 10 years from the uh, commencement of the procedure that is what is given in the uh, act so uh, can uh, i just uh, say that because sure. the consent is for is to protect the doctor they are uh, you, the patient is giving a consent to allow yeah. her to do the procedure and so it is to protect the doctor and so important that the doctor maintains the current uh, consent form So I, I request all the gynecologists to please follow this because in many many small IUI clinics probably they are not following the consent forms they do an IUI and uh, this is a must here afterwards consent forms has to be maintained and IUI summary though we run a fertility centers many times patient doesn't have an IUI summary with them if they have done previous IUIs so that has to be given to the patient as well as we have to have a copy of that in her. Uh, case sheet that again has to be preserved for at least ten years. So this was already discussed. Any change of the employer address or equipment in the center has to be intimated thirty days prior. That again comes under the duty of the gynecologist. So now coming to the role of counselor in a IUI clinic, I think Dr. Vivek would like to take yeah. this question. Yeah, see, a counselor is the one who would, uh, will explain to the patient all about the uh, side effects, the risks of. doing such a procedure and also what happens in the future about the child that is born through an iui procedure or the rights of the child is also important the child's right to uh, tomorrow to get information uh, about the uh, although the donor um, anonymity is very very important is the right of the child uh, to, to know how, about the procedure is what uh, has to be kept uh, in mind and uh, uh, and that has to be told to the uh, patients both the couple that uh, the child has a right right to information at some stage they cannot uh, the whole procedure of of assisted reproduction should be told to them although the uh, you know anonymity of the donor is is very important to be kept Anonymity. Yeah, that is, that is uh, for donor cycles. But uh, we yeah. we still need an uh, uh, counselor for doing IUI procedures because they might have a lot of uh, wow. doubts regarding that. And each time a gynecologist cannot explain. So probably the uh, risk factors or uh, what the complications of IUI, uh, even if it's with the husband, a counselor can uh, counsel them. And we have certain qualifications of the counselor as well as which is given in the. Uh, act so probably uh, they can act as a counselor but there was a question in the chat box uh, whether uh, a person uh, with a degree from allied sciences can be a counselor because it was given any graduate in life science or social worker or yes. social science yes, yes, can yes, a person yes. who has done uh, homeopathy or ayurvedic yes. or siddha can be a counselor yes it can be because uh, the government is trying to uh, propagate allied health sciences also as a part of uh, health services because in rural areas you just cannot get a qualified msc psychologist to go and uh, uh, you know uh, uh, to practice so therefore uh, they are promoting allied health services like uh, ayurveda and uh, uh, although it has to be registered Till now, still, uh, it is not given in the rule book, so I think uh, they cannot act as a counselor. But we might recently, no, the... recently they have been pa passing. Recently, the BJP government is trying to, uh, to you know, uh, legalize allied services. Okay, 
So apart from uh, IUI and donor IUIs, I'd like to talk about the other IUIs. But before that, I'd like to take this question for uh, Dr. Indumati, ma'am. What should be followed for donor IUI? For example, uh, as I told you, a small IUI clinics do an IUI with a donor sample, though not from a frozen sample. They get fresh processed sample from nearby labs and do IUIs. So what has to be followed from where they should get and uh, what concern they should follow. And if at all it becomes positive or negative, should we need to report to the bank from where we get the donor sample about the outcomes? Yeah, the, they should uh, get the donor sample from a registered ART bank. And uh, now the registered bank also should have the number. Uh, they have uh, like uh, what, the first of all, they should get the consent from the patient. Uh, as to what, um, the, what what sort of blood group and then the usual features, the hair of the, uh, the color of the hair and the eye, the basic uh, characteristics of the person, they should have a proper consent. And then uh, they should, the ART uh, bank from where they are taking this also should be a registered one. And uh, I think uh, once her clinic is registered, as level one clinic, then she can go ahead with the donor sample and it will be an anonymous donor where it is not disclosed. Yes, ma'am. So I don't know whether we have registered ART banks or cement banks uh, so far, but uh, I think we will be getting registered banks and we are supposed to get... Yeah, as of now, uh, we are making use of this Repro Labs. Repro Labs is providing for uh, most of the centers now, I think. Okay. So the thing is, uh, when uh, Dr. Vivek was talking about the legal rights of the child, suppose if the baby is coming after uh, 18 years, we normally preserve the records for 10 years. So how are we going to trace the donor in case if there is some life-threatening complications, something like that we need to... It will be very difficult because uh, legally they have asked us to keep only for 10 years and it is only at the discretion of the parents uh, we uh, usually we don't disclose practically we don't disclose the donors to the children at any stage in the life but if the parents wants to do it then uh, we need to go on uh, with the records and we can't keep the records for 18 years so practically it won't be possible i feel now, i think that's where <laughs> the serial number and the id of the donor is given in the sample that is donor profile which we get so i would request each one of the gynecologists to write this donor id or the and the serial number of the profile in the case sheet as well as in the consent form for whom we are doing the donor iui yeah so that, that we this, do this uh, definitely we will be doing that but how long are you going to preserve that even the parents when you give the record uh, they yeah, won't be able to yes yeah. sending this form again back to the this information has to be sent to the cryo bank once she becomes positive if she's delivering a child the, we have to intimate the bank about the details of this particular patient for whom we have done donor uh, iui with this number she has become positive and delivered this we inform the cryo bank after the outcome probably they might need to maintain that records for a long time we don't know how much days they have to maintain so probably it might help in future. So uh, can, you, can I just I uh, can I just intervene yes. here? See here, yes. you, the, the law says that you are supposed to within ten years you are going to give it to the registry and the registry will maintain the records yeah. till these yeah, yeah. So that's yes, what sir. I'm saying. So the, it's the duty of the registry to maintain everything. But within ten years, you should uh, first ten years you are supposed to keep it in your center and then transfer it to the registry. Which registry, national or state? National registry. Ma national registry. I, I think it also becomes important for us to inform the bank because how many pregnancies are allowed per donor? There is a limit to that, right? Okay, that, that question is there. Yeah. Donor samples. Uh, earlier, it was not more than 75. They said no, not more than 10 uh, pregnancies or something. But I don't know. This has not been clear in this act. It is so not mentioned in this. It is yeah. not mentioned. So probably we should follow the same uh, thing or not. I don't know. So unless we intimate this back to the bank, uh, we don't know uh, how it is going to come. So uh, to be honest, I have not done this so far. So only uh, when I'm preparing for this. And they have, panel, I mentioned that for, uh, for a woman that she should donate only once. 
I was wondering why they have not told anything about the semen samples because even that has to be controlled, isn't it? Yeah, that, that's what they, are. they want to make it into one right now. That's what they want to implicate. But it's going to be very expensive process. Then even the donor uh, say, uh, IUIs, all costs will go up. That's a Mr. Donor, who say donors are not paid anything? The sperm donors also will not be paid anything? So yes. it, it all even, even about that, it is not mentioned anywhere, madam. It is, uh, Donor's it is not mentioned are that it will be altruistic or uh, the mention about monetary benefits for both the donors, it's not mentioned. Madam, uh, can, I, uh, can I say something? Yes, sir. Yes. Sir, uh, for sperm donor also, it is one is to one ratio. In ERT new law, they have given that. So, Only but it is not published anywhere, sir. It is not there in the. Yeah, it is given, ma'am. It is given. It is given in uh, clause number uh, 27 gamut. and uh, something. Gamut means perm or oocyte. That is the thing. Yeah. And everything is to be only one. Saying, that's why I'm telling no, you. No, no, no. They, have, they, have, they have given clearly, sir. I, I'll read it out uh, if you want. Uh, they have given that a bank shall not supply the sperm or oocyte of a single donor or more than one commission couple. So it applies to sperm also. It is written there. That's what I meant. It is uh, only one. Yeah, only single donor. Single donor who said also on sperm also, single donor. It is very difficult That's situation, sir. Very difficult. How government thinks that uh, previously it was 30. Uh, as Madam said, previously it was 90. Then they brought it to 30 and now they have brought it to one. And they are saying now the, even the sale, sale of all gametes uh, is, is is prohibited. So I don't know how yeah, sale, it, is, <laughs> sale is prohibited. Donation is prohibited. No, nothing can be done. Uh, how will the bank survive? A... Yeah, and you cannot bring your own donor. <laughs> you need to take another donor only from bank. Yeah, anonymous. So, so regarding yeah. oocyte donor, like how do we know that the quality of the oocyte that they are going to give it to us would be good from the bank? But so here it is written. Now, right? see. It is That's written over true. here. The hair type and the hair color and everything they mention on the no, no, bank. The oocyte quality. Oocyte quality. quality. Ah. This we've been getting like this, but then oocyte quality, henceforth, how are we to you know understand that they're giving us a good quality and only seven oocytes is what is it? But then the Madam, yeah, quality. basically na uh, oocyte is to be retrieved by the gynecologist only. So it is to be decided by the gynecologist. The bank is not responsible for that. They will re because re retrieval facility is not there with the bank. Retrieval is to be done by gynecologist. Okay, so that means we have hmm. to register our center for yes. the bank. Okay. No, no, no. You we are not bank, madam. Uh, so that, you know, sir, like we want a donor who size, they are going to only recruit the donor and give it to us. But we are not entitled to retrieve the who sides, no? Unless and until ours is a bank, are we? Can we? Yes, you can you can retrieve because bank they don't have any facility, madam, for retrieval. They can recruit us. We can retrieve and uh, free. Ah, yes, yes. The gynecologist who yeah, they can tell about the quality of those. Yeah, the procedures yeah. should be done by the gynecologist. The banks yes. are supplying the gametes. Fine, that is yeah, better. Yeah. 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 I'm so sorry for uh, the coming in between. Thank uh, you. Thank uh, you. That was a valid point given. And uh, now we move on to the next part of IUI, that is uh, 2019, they came out that sperm banks struggle to meet demand for high IQ, fair complexion donors. Uh, so far in India, we don't have choice like this for uh, sperm donors. Of course, for USA donors, sometimes we check for the complexion, which should be as uh, comparable to the, you know, the couple who are asking for donors. And more single women has, IUI has coming to work. So, um, I would like to ask Dr. Mala about doing IUI for a single woman. Yeah, I think now the law is quite clear that single women can also have an IUI done. But only thing is we have to ensure that they are not lesbians. And uh, they are also financially uh, stable, emotionally stable for the, uh, uh, in fact, and then proper consent has to be taken because they are entitled to take care of this child all through by themselves. So they should also have financial stability. So all those things we have to make sure and then we can proceed with uh, single women IUA. So yeah, as, as you mentioned, a single woman, she might be a divorcee or a widow or an unmarried woman or 
that's it she one point be suppose uh, like suppose if she, her husband you know uh, uh, pa- i mean uh, dies in an accident posthumous so those uh, i mean from her dead husband we cannot retrieve the sperm all of a sudden if that is a situation the husband has to give his con- he should have given his consent earlier to the center that we can retrieve his sperm that one thing we have to keep in mind it, i mean if she become single following an accident or whatever so that's it and uh, probably as she said the uh, same sex couple cannot undergo iui as well as transgender as well so again the role of counselor becomes more important for this part as well because when we counsel a single women she might have a lot of psychological uh, problems reasons why she is opting for a, a baby is more important whether their family supports her as mala mentioned financial situation her education qualification whether as a single parent she will be able to bring the child up all this has to be discussed and uh, for uh, emotional support she needs a counselor for this so talking about the infrastructure and facilities uh, dr vivek they have listed a lot of equipments in the act so yeah. so the yeah the, as you say the centrifuge machine and uh, laminar airflow microscope incubator uh, you know uh, test tube bomb all these are necessary but they all should be kept in sterile uh environment that's important the sterile area you should also have a non sterile uh, area where you can counsel the patient and uh, that's very important where you can counsel and and uh, uh, and the patient can also be waiting area should also be provided so both uh, sterile and non sterile areas are to be maintained yes so a small clinic like a uh, uh, portion is not enough if you want to run an art center yes. all this it is has to be there so as ma'am mentioned before you apply for registration please make sure you have all this equipments and facilities in your center so that you will not have a rejection and most importantly fire safety arrangement i don't think a small setup will have all those so that again we have to take care and uh, the next part is uh, sorry i just want to tell something about this yeah autoclave area they have mentioned twice in that that is okay so fine so regarding the record maintenance i think we talked about this uh, when madam posted the form which have to send dr karpahambal there is a option where we should uh, mention what treatment was advised or suited for this couple but what treatment was carried out suppose for the patient if there is a severe male infertility like less than 1 lakh sperms you have advised ecsi for that patient but due to any reason like financial or some other reason she is opting for iui can you proceed iui and can you mention in this uh, record and send to the government though the count is very low you have proceeded with iui because we have see the counseling part plays a very important role in this and here we have to really tell them that you know many of them have a coin problem and sometimes uh even in even without this before this law itself we have had couples who have actually been uh, pulling few samples when the count is very low so pulled are you so in that case we know that correct treatment option would be ecsi but still because of couples uh, uh, requirement and their cost factor they have opted to try carry out the treatment option according to their will their their own uh, will and wish so we have to explain to them the success rate that is very important that is because we know that the outcome may not be all that optimal but still they have uh, got it uh, done so that is very uh, important counseling plays a very important role here and it has everything has to be document communication and documentation right so what i wanted to uh, add earlier was a fireproof cabinets and warming proofing all this i don't know whether it's mandatory but it is given in the uh, act that we should have all this uh, record maintenance should be kept in these particular areas not to be damaged by uh, natural calamities or uh, insects whatever it is so we will know uh, whether it's yeah, can i intervene here because uh, this counseling is very important because many of the litigation in the court has been because they come and say oh, this was not explained to me earlier and uh, uh, they put the blame on the doctor that uh, it was the doctor's fault and they don't accept the uh, responsibility and that's what uh, that's why now the uh, courts are very insistent that counseling is being done and everything has been documented counseling is a very important part of uh, of a infertility uh, procedure 
Thank you. So probably we need to document that in her uh, record as well, that counseling was done uh, given these points and it was, we can get a signature yes. from the patient that yes. this is advice. Okay. We usually discuss a plan of management. Sorry, once again, we, we just usually discuss a plan of management before every cycle and just make document it in the case sheet. So options discussed. So the plan for the first cycle is this. Then after a few cycles, if it doesn't work out, we write a plan. So I think it's nice to document that we have made up, discussed the option and made a concrete plan after discussion with the with the couple. And even the success rate for that yeah, success rate, yes. that again is uh, important. So, Dr. Indamati, I would like to ask you this question. This question was raised in the first panel itself. So, we have uh, uh -huh. options for IUI. We have so many uh, IUI uh, instruments and um, lab uh, structure in the center. So, given an option, who else you think is essential in an I, uh, level one clinic other than a gynecologist and a counselor? Andrologist. Yes. So, because they've given a lot of uh, uh, maintenance, record maintenance for the lab. Madam, can you go ahead, madam? Ma'am, can you hear me? Indumadi, ma'am? Well, regarding the andrology lab, they have given a list of instruments and uh, to make sure the gametes are not mixed, we have to give identity number for the tubes, dishes, and pipettes or whatever we are using in the lab. And a logbook has to be maintained, temperature, manometer readings of the laminar airflow, calibration of instruments, which has to be done, record of calibration done, and the refrigerator temperature, and media, what we are getting from outside, the expiry date, and of course, the AMC, which has to be done, what time, the filter, if you are using, all that has to be recorded. So definitely, and most importantly, for doing a proper semen analysis, we need an andrology technician. So unless we have a good person who does a semen analysis, a complete semen analysis to give us the details of a male factor, we cannot proceed to the next step in a couple of infertility. So again, to do a semen analysis, to process the IUI sample and to maintain all the IUI lab facilities and maintain record of the IUI procedures. And in the case of donor IUI, now we cannot get a sample and store it in our clinic. We are not supposed to store donor samples in our clinic. So then and there, we have to get the donor sample from the ART bank. So suppose if a patient is um, uh, getting uh, an IUI on uh, Friday, probably Wednesday, when you're given the HCG, we should, someone should inform the lab and they should get ready with the IUI sample from the bank, telling the details of the couple and then get the uh, equivalent uh, blood group or whatever it is and then she has to keep ready for the donor sample and so many procedures has to be done. So I think the lab personnel as an andrology, andrology technician is very essential for an IUI clinic as well. So any, any um, uh, dislikes or any comments from the side about this? Anyone? Sorry, I was offline for a moment because of some signal issues. I was about to tell that uh, uh, an andrologist is a must for an IUI clinic because uh, uh, they are the ones who do the semen preparation and most of the times it is done by the clinical pathology people, uh, so which may not be the right option. Uh, and also I wanted to tell that if the count is less than uh, 3 million, pooled samples will be fine. But when we give an option of treatment for the success of IUI, it's always better we stick to the guidelines as to three to five million at least. So uh, they have given what is the option that you have been and what is the treatment offered. So we have to be very careful when we do that because they also want to know what we have done besides giving some other advice. So that also they will be seeing. So it is better that uh, we say, uh, and counsel the patient how important a counselor is and also an andrologist is a must for a level one clinic also thank you thank you so i think i'm coming to the end of the discussion these are the concern forms if you're not using concern forms uh, please do follow the concern forms which is given in the icmr uh, website the concern form for uh, uh, donor as well as for the husband and um, as I was talking about the lot of infrastructure and um, uh, lab facilities and uh, employees for the center, I think um, the future of small IUA clinics is doubtful. So I'd like Dr. Malaraj to tell about this. Yeah. What 
Uh, in such a scenario, I think it is better to have or tie up with uh, another center which is going to do all these, uh, you know, um, registrations, maintaining their records and all those things and preparing preparing the sample. The clinic gynecologists can go to these centers and only do the procedures which would be much better off. And in fact, it will uh, remove all the hazards from them also, no? So I think this is a thing which is going to be in the uh, process for small uh, clinics where who want to do IUI, unless and until they really want to expand, because it is not just uh, you know the registering the clinic. There are certain mandate rules that they have to follow to register to fit into the criteria. They should have slightly a bigger space where you know they have all this criteria of lamina flow and all this and that fire regulation. Everything is also there. So it may be a little bit uh, you know difficult for them to expand and uh, uh, you know start just an IUI. Uh, a clinic in their own setup in such a situation it is always to have a network hospital and then you know do it in with the main center so we should be much better of that i think that would be the future for small clinics any other opinion please for example you're running an iua clinic now then what you should do is you should get yourself uh, uh, registered with a bigger center so you do all your procedures in level one but your name should be in that level two so that you can go and do if you want. So that type of acceptance will be there once the law comes into place because all the small clinics, they cannot afford to go on to have IVF centers in their own places. So that will be accepted in the future. I think that will come. Yeah. Yeah. It will be uh, better if they have a, a folliculogram in place, like uh, yeah. some kind of a summary uh, where what gonadotrophins has been given and what was the post-wash, like some summary because Sometimes we don't get to see anything. Uh, we get the basic information from the patient as to how many injections were given or uh, any trigger injection was given and what was the count like. So any basic information uh, should be given so that the other clinician who sees in a different center, it will be helpful. So documentation of the scan and uh, the post-wash sample will be uh, very useful. Madam, that all has to be maintained now very clearly with the new law. You can't yeah, say yeah, anything. Uh, yeah, after this uh, new rules and guidelines, I think uh, slowly they will also start doing it. Oh, we have to maintain many registers for IUI itself. Mm, yeah. Not only consent and other things. So now the register itself is going to be big. What about IUI in absentia? The husband is living abroad or anything like that. No. No, no, not accepted. The frozen oh, sample, frozen sample with the prior informed consent. Yeah, why not do all the formalities? Freeze the sample, get the consent, yeah. and why you can't you can't do. Do. with his yeah. consent, you can do whatever with his consent. Sample. Without yeah, his consent, consent, we can't do. So, so we, we can. Do. Okay. Consent already taken and he has already frozen the sample. Yes. I think we can definitely do it because in COVID, actually, we have to do quite a lot because yes, yes. many people could not come back to India or they could not come on time for patients. Patients, they did not what what is future ahead. So they actually, with proper consenting, I think it can be done uh, with frozen sample. Mm -hmm. Actually, when we put our opinions, I think all of us should put that point that uh, donor samples can be stored in your level one clinic. That is semen sample because every time you cannot go and ask a bank in a bigger place for some donor samples and present take it to your center. So at least a number of samples they can mention. We can maintain it in our center, and once it's over, we can ask the bank for fresh samples and take it. I think that we should mention in the uh, that whatever we are going to put as opinion to the government. I think that needs to be mentioned by every level one clinic because it's very difficult to do it like two days before so send somebody and get a sample. And the other thing they have not mentioned what is the qual qualification of an andrologist in a level one clinic what qualify because if you have a higher qualification no andrologist is going no embryologist is going to come and work in a center for just for ui so they need to so that also you have to mention any level one play clinic put because a gynecologist can prepare a semen sample it doesn't need much of a great uh, uh, knowledge or whatever about uh, embryologist to do, do a semen preparation so please put that also in your opinion that you can do a gynecologist should be a uh, uh, should be allowed to do a semen preparation in their own center. Put it as other things. Armila, can I just uh, give one suggestion? Yeah. You also can do the semen preparation. Junior yeah. It doesn't need somebody with great qualifications to prepare a semen sample. Armila, my, my suggestion is, see, in this particular, uh, uh, both the panels, we've had all heads uh, coming together, like a lot of uh, office bearers. So if... Uh, you can put a list of recommendations, yes. say we even come up to 20 or 30, either 
Priya Kannan or you, all of you put together, we can send it as bulk emails to all yes. our members. Like we may have 150, 250, 300 members with us. And then they can put them as their individual recommendations, which they support yes. to that particular email uh, as recommendation. So it'll be an easier, see, cut, copy, paste is easier for us than to sit and document. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So That's a great idea. Office, <laughs> let us Priya, your network is very poor. Through this, we can... Yeah. yeah, that's a great idea. We'll sit and like collate all the whatever suggestions have come, uh, make it into a single mail. Uh, we'll take the responsibility. Yes, yes. We'll do that. We'll do that. So I think we should do that. Yeah. Because, because you cannot uh, like uh, uh, throw off the level one clinics. Uh, uh, that is the bread and butter for so many people. So they, they should be given the preference. You should actually encourage these small centers to come up much better. And even and the level one clinic people should ask, can I stimulate and do an uh, ah, uh, IUI? Also, and put and it as a point. They should, they should represent. I mean, maybe even in many rural areas, in cities, I think it's uh, many people we are trying to do what we can do the best. But in rural areas, what is exactly going on? And they are actually clueless. But things keep going on, I mean, as usual. So actually, I think need to. No, uh, actually, Dr. Karpakambal, the national level, the ministry, uh, they, have, they have got so many complaints from throughout the country. That is the reason this has come into the pitch. Because I agree, madam. And in PCP India, also we see how you know uh, the perfect center with everything in place is the one which will be doing the pro problem. The, cell, right. the, 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 the female fetus said, but a small practitioner who is so enthusiastic about OG will not even know what forms to maintain, but they will not do that sex selection. But right. they will get caught because they don't know how to fill up the forms. And uh, they, that, that is the most path Thing. That's why everybody should know what's happening. You may be in a rural center, but if you're doing a level two work, you have to be ready to face that also. You cannot say, I'm in a rural area, I cannot, I do not have the access because the government got complaints and that's why this is happening. It's not. See, uh, had, see many people call from rural areas and ask me, it's all senior professors whom I know in the uh, small towns, they call and ask me, what is this? Why is it uh, happening like this? Because we have been doing for so many years and we have actually. We are very small practitioners and they do it very cheap, actually. Even I had questions from trust hospitals, charitable institutions, because they are doing it such a low cost for even IUA. And people, they cater to such economically backward section people. So they were actually quite worried because these laws may actually stop, should not no, stop. No. Karpakambal, the complaints <laughs> went from yes, the rural yes, areas yes, only. Body, complaints <laughs> went because agree, they were I doing, agree. no, no, embryo donation was being done right, left and center. In those small, whatever you think is a rural area, they were much advanced it's in your Chennai not center. to reduce the services. It's only a regulatory, ah, process. regulatory process. Only a regulatory I completely process. agree with standardization. Everything everything. will have a law and order, isn't it? Yeah, but why, why we have a law and order? Be aware. See, the thing is, we have to make them aware of it because they are not aware of it. That is a problem there. See, not yeah, but now it is, uh, see, if they are going to get the help of senior person that senior person will tell them no that the guidelines have changed and uh, yes, yes, things yes, have yes. to be changed and she has to register so the by word of mouth it will spread easily i think it's for us to create awareness to them also guidelines. because they are very senior people sometimes who are yeah. not aware of the latest guidelines and latest uh, rules and regulations time of six months uh, so yeah. that uh, they can uh, they will be aware of it and they will do something related to registration or at least with to have a tie-up with the ART center. Okay, very true. I completely agree with the standardization, regularization. I know how, how HFEA is doing in UK with all the things, that even your small OHSs, minor OHSs. I think we have to report within seven days and major OHS, we have to report within 24 to 40 hours. That's so why all that the is. things have to be reported to the HFEA. See how yes, it has to be reported. these things can be done HFEA. in the country like this. It I think we can also do it. And I think I think uh, what I sincerely feel is having uh, gone through this COVID situation with the online thing for so many days, even simple Google Forms can actually help us submit our documents, our several registrations, our statistics. All these can be done through simple Google Forms. So I think it's very important for us, you know, to create awareness about this because even when we are talking about you know uh, laws, laws and rules, still not very people are even aware of it. I think we have to tell them. No, no, they will be pulled. They will be pulled into it. Correct, correct. 
it's almost yeah, my last question to all the panelists including rajapriya what would you like to change add or delete in this act for level 1 art clinic if given an option what will you add or delete that that's exactly what i was telling like i think uh, there is so much you no know, considering that i would request uh, arti and charmila to take onus and uh, put a post of recommendations which we will start posting in our bodies because i think uh, in the chat box and everything we, we got the information you know? have confusion about iui and apps and got uh, doubts like why don't we get our own patients who are willing to be donating semen we have a lot of our patients right who are willing to be semen donors so which we can create our own uh, uh, base so this probably will be a recommendation and i think all this effort is only to make the whole program a little cheaper and that's the whole point what is the what are the others opine they can all come up with their own suggestions i think uh, one very relevant point put by dr sumathi in the chat box uh, all the professional societies should come in, come together for this at least make sure that all of us are talking in the same voice so it reaches the national level because talking in our place and it not reaching the intended intended place is never going to help anybody so professional association should come together and send and what rajapriya said is very relevant all of us should put our suggestions together so that every mail which goes has all the uniform suggestions and recommendation by all the members that will have more of so that will get yeah, that will get more impact to so the same point is being told by 500 people or 1000 people so i think we will really do it by this weekend charmila and then yeah. keep spreading the word, uh, word around and for some members we have bulk emails going for so many reasons why not a bulk email but the individual email should be pressurized upon so let's guide them these are the emails where you should post these recommendations yes we'll do it rajapriya anyone else yeah basically you know we I have to make sure like how we have I mean i mean i'm not sure we had a birth defect registry for medicine for um, uh, second trimester anomalies and we used to meticulously fill every time we ha have a second trimester anomaly and actually that act help us have a good statistics and epidemiology for our own country and for our own city and state now that we are lacking in lot of things whatever we are talking in pain conferences everything is only western data but i think by doing all these things we will be able to get a good statistics and epidemiology from our own country our own city so that you know what is our success rate i mean critically appraise ourselves and audit ourselves See, as you write uh -huh. this national registry everything is finally bringing about regulations accountability and a standard of practice it's only that over a period of time all these pitfalls by our recommendations uh, should fall in place the board is willing to listen to recommendations am i right charmila yes i get it. i didn't get the question what was it so, uh, i'm sure as we put forth our recommendations the board will consider the yes 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 because see uh, we have gone with those inspection teams so i got an idea of how the center people think uh, rajapre in uh, regarding the central government they are very very sympathetic to the gynecologists i'm telling you like they go out of the way to help the uh, people where we are going for inspections the problem is always with the state authority they have a different interpretation of what is supposed to be done and they irritate both the central authority as well as us who are going with them and we try to as foxians we go and we try to help the foxy members who are there when the inspection is going on and we make sure that nobody gets any uh, get in, gets into any penalty because of form filling or anything like that only when you do a gross mistake of your done a selection then only you will get a punishment so it, it's not we, we need not think that the center is against us they are totally they want to help the gynecologist i can tell you they are more sympathetic than us i i've seen the under secretaries who come for the team in, along with the team for the inspection and they're so sympathetic so once you follow the law and do it according to it i don't think we'll have any issue even whatever new bill or act comes but you just you have to update yourself there's no excuse saying i do not know the law i was not in the place only so all that excuse nobody will accept because now with the media social media going on so much they expect you to know what's happening around and you cannot have an excuse for that and they are very sympathetic i can tell you that should not worry at all it's a good thing this law is coming actually that's what i was feeling charmi can i have yes yes charmila Yes, they were talking about this uh, 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 records maintenance for the iui people like you know that uh, for 10 years and everything yes, if the child wants to know about the thing because 
child has got every right to know about the details of the donor right uh, uh, that's a very ambiguous thing but that's what the rule is saying that they they ask we have to what? submit all third party reproduction uh, rules say that madam yeah, all third party reproduction rail rules say that you know oh, after the age of 18 the child has a right to know but i'm sorry after you come both how are we going to keep the registration no please uh, just recheck if it is mentioned in the new this this particular one no that when you are using a donor sample you have to maintain that separate from this all other procedures maintain for 10 years but the donor sample yes sharmila the sample which is given to us will be by anonymous name only but the you, you, you have no madam you have the details no that uh, sec, that the color of the eyes the blood only that to you have you can give you need not to you can give the genetic you don't have any genetic அந்த பேங்க்ல இருந்து ஒரு ஃபார்ம் குடுக்குறாங்கல மேடம் அந்த ஃபார்ம நீங்க மெயின்டெய்ன் பண்ணி வச்சுக்கணும் அது 18 வயசுல கேட்டா அது கொடுத்துட்டு போயிரலாம் அதுல என்ன இருக்கு அதுல என்ன இருக்கு நான் கேக்குறேன் ஜெனெடிக் மேம் நோ 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 சார்மில நோ ஐ திங்க் தி பேங்க் ஏஆர்டி பேங்க் இஃப் தே ஆர் गोइंग टू गिव अस அ டோனர் சாம்பிள் தே ஷட் ஹேவ் தி நேம் அண்ட் தி அட்ரஸ் ஆஃப் தி டோனர் बिकॉज़ இஃப் தி சைல்ட் டெவலப்ஸ் தட்ஸ் தி ரெஸ்பான்சிபிலிட்டி தி பேங்க் வாட் ஐம் சேயிங் இஸ் அ கிளினிக் இஃப் தே ஆஸ்க் யூ this Amma. form only you have the you can show that if you want That's because all problem. these all these years we were using you know we were supposed yeah. to have the records but now the art so bank, bank should have that. the yeah, address yeah. and everything if the child develops any sick uh, any yeah. diseases probably the art bank should give them yes ma'am so anonymity uh, is so right to write the information Jamila. back they are telling if the child no matter i want ma'am, for 18 years ma'am that is what happened in uk and then what happened was the donors lma they stopped giving the samples and they had a scarcity so i think now they again they made it is a mandatory if the child develops anything the child has got every right and children i think that needs to be addressed That's so one thing the child has all the right who will donate after 18 years somebody is going and tracing them like just in swiss film they go and trace of other in the ma'am in the consent form of the donor it is mentioned that uh, the anonymity will be maintained and it should not yes. be exposed at yes. any point to the recipient it is given yes. at the form yes. that is signed by the donor when he is being signed that form how That's can we expose it to the That's parent That's what i'm telling when the donor when we are getting the signatures yeah. in the donor that, that ஒரு <laughs> <laughs> it is going to be you are telling it's a right when you say right to the information and he has a right because i am having genetic disease you nobody is going to the, uh, take so the responsibility both are contradictory ma'am at present the donor consent form says that he is not connected to the recipient in any but way how will he give how will he reveal the identity so when, both the, are when you have got the signature that his name will not be revealed after yes. 18 years what right we have to whether so you we can't or the ard has the right to both yeah, are reading the name they're talking about rights on one side and they are also getting the signature from the donor well, you are talking about the right of the child what of the right of the madam. donor that's what i'm asking yeah. the donor is madam madam, madam, is... madam there there are madam, there are many you know there are many ambiguities in the indian law yes, madam, when you are writing you should you take tell it, about the right of the donor also madam, madam madam if you take the poxo act and the mtp act mtp act clearly says confidentiality has to be maintained but when a pregnancy comes below the age of 18 we inform even the police so the confidentiality is going off there anga vande other what we can do is what is according to law you put it in a document and leave it like that only because everything will have a problem somewhere or the other ipo nam enna panna mudiyum 18 years i will maintain let them do whatever you want probably i won't be alive at that time you do whatever you want avladha we can do because the indian law is not clear for the gynecologist any law you take everywhere is a confusion See, there is a loophole everywhere ma'am the, the form fla the form fla they they creating so much havoc in that local center in trichy they keep on saying you fill up for every ivf procedure i you charmila i want to ask you that in that form f there is no provision where it talks about all the other conditions i i, I, I will show you which where you have to fill up ஒரு 
you have to fill up that form f and submit because we have not made it into a rule or something but you are asking them to collect form f konda so now the trace kondradhukke it took me 2 3 days everybody i kept on asking where should i because form g ana form g la we don't do any procedure we are not doing any genetic procedure so how should i fill up form g ellam ketta perukku this person alone he said this part you fill it up and send it to the because it's local authority that fellow here every day he rings up and gives galis to the reception saying you are not given form for iv iu i think a recommendation la anupla alla la anupuro anupuro avan pera pote na anupra pera pote correct i'm not done that anupodiyo madam inime you have to fill up that's what they are saying it is not under the but we are it is not under the rule at all nobody can compel us they mm. cannot compel us but they have sent it you know another way to escape from this, this form donation anonymity okay priya yeah, you have to fill up this priya have to fill up this that is uh, yeah. the uh, and that uh, number 18 lerund num i'm sorry 17 lerund section okay. c nu on irukku la section c nu form f la adula you have to fill up okay got it i'll tell these girls now அது வந்து யாட்டு தே ஆஸ்ட் இன் சென்னை இன் திருச்சி தே ஆஸ்கிங் ஐ டோன்ட் நோ வெதர் தே ஆஸ்கிங் இன் சென்னை இல்ல நான் ஐஓஏக்கு கேக்குறது இல்ல ஒப்பி ஆஸ்ட் இல்ல நானும் கேட்கவே மாட்டாங்க நினைச்சிட்டு இருந்தேன் போன வாரம் அவ்ளோ சண்டை அந்த லோக்கல் இது அந்த கிளர்க்கோட we are fighting with the clerk here not with the authority he is saying i want those forms that's true so what they said was we are asking them to do it verbally so you do it in solrar ministry la I'm giving instruction to the see in the sperm donation ke another way to escape from all these problems is the art bank can ask for an inherited disease panel adayo panitte idukku mele edha nadandha we are not responsible the intending parent everybody should sign on uh. here then we are all say they pay they get it done and they move that's it avlo da something we, we, we need to go around somewhere and find a solution that's what we can do at this point <laughs> Ajapriya, can we close the session? Initially, there will be a lot of teething troubles. We will, we will, all of us will have teething issues initially, and then after some time, I think we'll get used to it. Like how we got to PCP and this year, MKT, we will get uh, get used to this we'll as well. We'll become so old, we'll forget our obstetrics. <laughs> That's all. <what it is. laughs> I have definitely reached retirement stage, so no uh, problem. I'm, I'm sick of this. <laughs> ஹாஸ்பிட்டல் <laughs> floor or a space for all this uh, iui and where will the other junior i mean uh, small clinics will do so if such things are going to happen i think a long term is all small uh, low middle class upper middle class people who are coming to the uh, practitioners they will be finding very difficult so this uh, uh, discussion has put a lot of uh, information to all the thing i earnestly tell all the indian I, I, ifs to take this and uh, make all amendments in the act so that all the low middle class people also get because in government institution where i work we try to do a uih uh, for very few people we were able to do we are, uh, we are not able to when i was there even now after the so much population hardly 10 iuis have to done in over a period of 4 6 months so it's very difficult so we should start and we should uh, represent the uh, government uh, all these things that is my plea i think um, any other all we have uh, exhaustedly told about all the art yeah, build i don't think anything to add uh, dana you want to add something on you have oxy oxy no, 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 right? i want to thank uh, what are the recommendation to foxy will send also yes, i want to thank rajpi ayyappan uh, profusely for organizing the cm in a very very grand way and uh, i think highest uh, delegate so far in our uh, tenure and uh, thanks rajpriya and thanks for organizing such a lovely i had been there yeah. almost 15 days with 15 minutes from the start of the program i had been locked in and uh, nice uh, even though the only the second half i could relate to the first half i couldn't understand much but uh, since we have a art center in uh, srmc so we don't uh, we don't worry much about it because whatever has to be done will be done by reddy sir and team so we just send the patients as meant for iui and the sample ready and just go and uh, 
sign somewhere and come off. So we don't go into depth because as a ART center, we are safe. But as Premlata Madam raised his apprehension, the smaller centers will find it difficult to comply with all the rules and regulations. I think as a body, as a whole, you people can put down uh, everything neatly and send it to everybody so that everybody will cut, copy, paste, which is the easiest thing as suggested by Subhati and uh, Rajpriya to post it to the concerned authority. I don't know whether as a gentle clinic, uh, magician. Ma'am, you can also do it, ma'am. Uh, uh, Rajpriya, the recommendations what IFS uh, local body uh, Tamil Nadu chapter through well, Oxy well, also we will uh, transfer well, well, uh, well, 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 to the city. Trichy society, all uh, societies can represent and yes, we can sir. ask a thing that also we can Try and gain momentum by numbers uh, by using this opportunity. So I take this opportunity to thank uh, each and every one of you, Premlata Madam, Dhanlakshmi Madam, my IFS members, all the moderators who have taken their time off. I think the last three hours we've been doing a lot of brainstorming on this issue. It is a key issue. It is where we can help the infertility patients uh, to get the best of service, uh, ethically to be sound, to be get getting into accountability at the same time financially viable uh, program so thanks to shield pharma and uh, chitrakala and mr naresh for making this uh, uh, webinar sponsor and thanks Thank to you, almost uh, more than 420 delegates who had logged in in and out of the program and almost uh, 250 delegates who consistently bear with us uh, so thank you uh, to each and every one of you Thank you so much to the moderators uh, for choosing the questions and meticulously bringing out the best from our uh, faculty. Thank you so much. Thank you, Priya. Thank, Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, so Raja Priya, IFS, for, uh, on behalf of Oxy for speaking uh, us. Thank you very much. Thank you, Premila Thank, Thank, Thank you, Dr. Thank, Thank you, Sharmila. Thank, Thank you. Bye. Bye, Ajay. All the best. Yeah, thank, you. Thank, Thank you. So Thank you, Madam. Thank you for calling. All the best. Thank you for staying on.